The following is a special presentation of the Sci-Fi Channel. I'm really worried about her, Alec. It's been weeks since I've talked to Tressa. I just wish I knew what was going on. Keeping faith alive is never easy. Yeah, especially when she's in some foreign country by herself, thousands of miles away. Trust in her strength, Will. You know, just once, once, I wish I could get a handle on things the way that you have. Never downplay your own abilities. What abilities? I'm barely staying afloat here. I mean, the Swamp Tours ain't exactly been booming since I took over. It doesn't mean you don't have the talents. Yours are more personal. People feel comfortable when they're with you. You really think so? No. Excuse me? Something's wrong. We must hurry. Oh, no. so much. I must give Irma something back. She's gone. What could you possibly give back to her now? I can't. Her daughter. when Roy was born. Spies. Oh, I was very nervous about the difference in their ages. But he always treats Roy as if he's an equal. Should we order pizza? Okay. Roy adores the shirt that Zach gave him. Roy lives in that shirt, so it gets washed a lot. Yeah, I just want to keep it looking great. For clothes that get worn a lot, there's Tide. Regular detergents can leave clothes looking old. But Tide helps keep cotton clothes looking newer longer. Roy feels so close to his brother. They're inseparable. Now take in the outdoors. Fresh, cool, clean. Introducing Mountain Spring Tide with bleach. It leaves behind a fresh outdoor scent. It's got to be Tide. I smoke. Got a light? Now, do you see tar stains on my teeth or smell tobacco on my breath? My mouth washes Targon. Look how Targon removes tobacco stains. If you smoke, use Targon. You're watching the Swamp Thing Marathon on the Sci-Fi Channel. You don't get in this kind of shape running on a treadmill. You do it with strength exercise, and I do it with a bow flex. You know, if you're not working out with strength training right now, you need to. Because if you want to lose weight, you've got to add the muscle, and that's why you need a bow flex machine. It's like nothing else you've ever tried before. We've got over 60 exercises you can do on a bow flex. 
you're never going to get bored. You can do a full workout in 20 minutes on a Bowflex machine. You're not going to believe how effective results you won't find it. If you call and get our free videotape, you're going to see an effective workout and see how easy and quick and fun working out with Bowflex is. Now back to the Swamp Thing Marathon on the Sci-Fi Channel. Kathy Swanson? Yes. My name's Will Kipp. Your mother and I, we shared a, a close friend. First of all, I'd like to say how sorry I am that she's passed away. Thank you. Plus one four seven from New Orleans. Now Can I give you a lift? Uh, yeah, yeah, that would be nice. Obviously, my taxi's never gonna show. I'm staying at the hotel downtown. I figured as much. It's the only one we got. We well, certainly pack light. I won't be staying long. Kathy, if you'd like to stop by the church, the Reverend Miller says that he's available to discuss the services with you. I'm sure whatever he has planned will be just fine. I'd forgotten how far off the beaten track this place is. Yeah, <laughs> that it is, but I don't know. I've I've gotten used to it. There's there's something kind of nice about being able to control your gunshots and traffic noises with your TV for a month. So, how long has it been since you've been back home? This was never my home. not just one person to us, but many. An independent woman, a friend, a faithful member of her church, and a loving mother. But let us not forget that above all, Irma Swanson was part of our Creator's plan. Let us not grieve too long for her. For at a point we will be grieving not for her, but for ourselves. Life is so peculiar, isn't it, Alec? things we do over if only we could we all have regrets the worst for me is knowing i drove my daughter off the way i did but you didn't drive her off <sighs> and you don't have to sugarcoat the truth for me i'm not yes you are irma not every child grows up to stay at home some just can't wait to strike out on their own you're a good friend alec but we both know that i treated her the way my parents treated me I drove my daughter from my life single-handedly. I'd do anything to take it all back. To be a better mother to her. You did the best you could at the time. And that's not sugarcoating, that's fact. Alec, Kathy hasn't so much as talked to me. She hates me. My own daughter hates me. She hates me. Kathy, your mother's with the Lord now, and he's the better for it, in my opinion. Thank you, Reverend. It was a lovely service. It won't be the same Sunday mornings without seeing Irma's face in the front row. You look so much like her when she was young. Fortunately, that's where the similarities end. Goodbye, Reverend. you might like some help. I'm managing fine, thanks. Well, how about some company? I don't have time to be social. Well, I meant for me. I mean, let's face it, home is not exactly New York City on a Friday night. The work gloves are over there.
Hmm. Your mother must have lived here a long time. As long as I can remember. Did you live here? Until I was old enough to escape. She sure did like collecting. Did you ever wonder where someone gets all those salt and pepper shakers? No, I don't. Really? My mother and I were not very close. Yeah, well, my old man and I, we've got a pretty lousy relationship, too. I know how it is. Nobody knows how it is. The only relationship she and I had ended the day I left. Which, by the way, was none too soon. How old were you? Sixteen. Hey. Hey, wait. I'm sure a lot of work went into keeping this healthy. Your mother had quite the green thumb. My mother was an eccentric old fool. I mean, look at this place. It's a pigsty. How can anyone live like this? You mean alone? Without her daughter? That was her choice, not mine. I never asked her to be strange. Do you have any idea what it's like growing up having your mother be the town joke? Having all your friends make fun of you because of her? I used to cringe in fear every time she came to my school or took any interest in any of my activities. I could count on her to do one inappropriate thing or another. She never did anything like a normal mom. She just sat here, talking to the damn cats. Maybe that's because cats don't judge. And maybe you should leave. No argument there. It's no use, Alec. The lady is an ice princess. <laughs> She's a victim of her own hate and nothing more. You kidding me? Man, she has not been nice to one person since she's gotten in this town. I mean, she didn't even cry at her own mother's funeral. Kathy believes she was wronged by her mother. She's in a great deal of pain. Yeah, well, it must be tough lugging around an attitude like that. Irma was very troubled, Will. Years ago, she had an emotional breakdown, and for a long time, showing love was hard for her, even love for her own daughter. Kathy felt rejected. At least you tried. Alec, how come you never mentioned Irma to me before? I mean, we're as close as friends can get. You never once even told me about her. Everyone is a part deep inside. They never show anyone. Okay, I can take a hint. When I crawled from the swamp, disfigured and confused, Irma found me. I wanted to die, but she brought me back, mentally and physically. I was so bitter, anybody would have given up, but not Irma. She saw past my pain. So how are you going to turn Kathy around? I'm not. Irma can do that better than I ever could. You never seen a war hero before? I didn't know it was Halloween. Mom? Mom? So why are you dressed like this? I enlisted, babe. What? I'll tell you about it on the way to Mel's. One three-layer wedding cake, done. Three? Should be six. Oh. I'll go get the flour. Oh. Bayer relieves the inflammation that can cause arthritis, pain, and stiffness. Tylenol can't. And taken regularly, only Bayer can help save your life by reducing the risk of another heart attack. Ask your doctor. Ta-da! It's beautiful, but it's Ed and Norma. Oh. 
think you'll notice. Bayer, powerful pain relief and so much more. Also, try extra strength Bayer PM, the only nighttime aspirin. Quit hogging the cashews. I'm not. R2. I'm not. R2. I'm not. Animal. It's a cat. It's a beaver. It's a brown cat. It's a beaver. I think it's a marmot. That was a beaver. Are beavers nice? Yes. Look at him. There he is. Oh, yeah. He looked at me. I'm going to give He's him a nut. He's cute, isn't he? No. Beavers don't like nuts. Huh? I've never seen a beaver eat a nut. I've never seen a Everyone beaver. Everyone loves planters nuts. <laughs> Sliders. Only on the Sci-Fi Channel. Monday at 9 p.m. Eastern. We now return to the Swamp Thing Marathon on the Sci-Fi Channel. I'm telling you guys, somebody's got to do something about the commies. Oh, what are you going to do? Bore them to death? I'm talking peace and freedom, pizza face. I mean, MacArthur was right. We should have kicked tail when we had a chance. Dad, I thought we were going to talk. Talk? That's all he's been doing is talking. Talking and talking. I bet you he's a lot of fun to drive in, huh? <laughs> hey, knock it off, guys. Hey, how you doing? Well, I play this game with other hearts. I never thought I'd see. What's wrong, babe? I don't like all this kidding around. There's nothing funny about this. Don't you think I know that? I'm not sure what you know anymore. Why didn't you tell me you were going to join the Air Force? It was a surprise. Oh, it sure was. You wrecked everything. No, I didn't. What happened to all our plans? What happened to us getting married after school? Look, you know my father's been sick. I had to do something to help out. There are other ways to make money. Yeah, I could have got a job here, a handful of nickels and all the fries I could eat. What am I supposed to do? You're all I've got. You know what my parents are like. <laughs> well, well. A tan hut. Oh, funny, Tony. You know, you ought to be on Arthur Godfrey. Oh, say it ain't so, Griffith. Say you ain't really shipping out. So what if I am? What happens to the title? Are we all supposed to just sit around waiting for you to get done playing soldier? You know, maybe you should have thought about that when you lost to me. Yeah. Well, it's a little tough to think when your car ain't right. Hey, Tony, when are you gonna accept the fact that you're not the racing king you thought? When I get my rematch. There ain't gonna be no rematch. I got more important things to do. You're saying you're better than me? Get out of my face, Tony. Race me or take me, soldier boy. Your choice. Brad. What's with him? Mom? 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 Are you here? I know I saw you. It wasn't her. <sighs> I mean you no harm. I only want to talk. This is as close as I'll come. Who are you? You've been given a gift, Kathy. The chance to be where you never could and to see all that your eyes have been closed to. What are you talking about? And how do you know my name? Your mother began adulthood, like most teenagers, alive and full of dreams. You saw that for yourself tonight. So what if I did? What do you want from me? Only a little more of your time. There are reasons people change, Kathy. And some of the reasons are quite tragic. No. Time to get the whipping you deserve, Griffith. That's what you said last time. All you did was eat my dust. Oh, I can't believe you're going to do this. Honey, there's nothing else I can do. Oh, you can say no. I only this one. For God's sake, Mom, don't let him talk to you like this. What about what you owe me? You said no more races. Come on, now, don't get so upset. It's just a stupid race. I hate this. Everything's changing so fast. You're going off for God knows how long, and all I want to do is be with you. Take this with you. 
Step back. It's gonna be okay. It's okay. I'll be right back. Oh, Mom, you can't let him do this. Something terrible is gonna happen. I know it is. Let's go, Tony. Come and get me. Listen to me. You can't raise each other. Everybody. This was never my home. There are reasons people change, Kat. Do you have any idea what it's like growing up having your mother be the town joke? I'm gonna have this baby. to start. There was so much I never knew. And I, I let that get in the way. We both did. I can't imagine what you went through losing Brad. Dad. And then raising me all by yourself. to Reverend Miller. He told me that your parents threw you out. Mom, no wonder you were so private about everything. <laughs> I really did love you deep inside. <laughs> and I always will. <laughs> I, I can't tell you how pleased I am that you came. I knew you would eventually. Spend your 4th of July with some strange friends. The Twilight Zone Marathon, tomorrow beginning at 11 a.m. Eastern, only on the Sci-Fi Channel. I really believe that a family doesn't have to look like one thing or another. We just adopted John. 
Right away, I fell in love with him. A first-time mother with a four-year-old. It's overwhelming. At the end of the day, his clothes are a disaster. For tough stains, there's Tide with bleach. It has more stuff to get out more tough stains better than other detergents, and it helps keep colors bright. And now people tell me that he looks like me, so... <laughs> Now take in the outdoors. Fresh, cool, clean. Introducing Mountain Spring Tide with bleach. It leaves behind a fresh outdoor scent. It's gotta be Tide. Quit hogging the cashews. I'm not. R2. I'm not. R2. I'm not. Animal. It's a cat. It's a beaver. It's a brown cat. It's a beaver. Look, it's a marmot. That was a beaver. Our beaver's nice. Yes. Look at him. There he is. Oh, yeah. He looked at me. I'm going to give He's him a nut. He's cute, isn't he? No. Beavers don't like nuts. I've never seen a beaver eat a nut. I've never seen a Everyone beaver. Everyone loves Planner's nuts. Fresh roasted taste. And they're cholesterol free. Oh, he's good. He's very good. Planners, relax, go nuts. Think that'll fit in the van? Walk into a house clean with Pine Saw, mm, and you know it's clean. Well, now, there's a new smell of clean. New rain clean Pine Saw. The power of Pine Saw, but with a fresh scent. Mm, like after a spring rain. New rain clean Pine Saw. Blueberry. No. Strawberry. Wait, buttermilk. Mm. Uh, apple cinnamon. Banana bread. Yeah, yeah. I mean, minis. Yeah, minis. No, wait. Strawberry. Late for school, nine weeks straight, Harold finally decided which delicious Eggo waffle he wanted. Blueberry. Unfortunately, he wasn't alone. Hey, look at my Eggo. And the next nine weeks Bunnel, I mean, began to look bad. Hey. Eggo waffles. So many flavors, so little time. No, wait. They say it can't happen here. But what if it did? Would you be a bystander, collaborator, or would you fight back? The V Saga Week, part of the Sci Fi Channel Summer Movie Blast, begins Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. From shape shifting mutants to diabolical witchcraft, explore the dangerous domain of one monstrous hero. The Swamp Thing Marathon continues. Sci Fi Channel next. next to a voyage to the bottom of the sea set. And there would be days when some poor stuntman in a wetsuit would go rampaging through the sea view on voyage to the bottom of the sea. And the next day, the same guy would be back in the same suit, only they'd spray him green, and he'd come rampaging through, you know, some unknown alien world on Lost in Space. If you've got little... Is it ready yet? Is it ready yet? That's why we invented tropical freezes. Daiquiris, margaritas, and punches with the alcohol already in them. You just freeze them and serve. Is it ready yet? What were you doing in there? Tropical freezes. It's already ready already. You are watching the Sci-Fi Channel. Sometimes melancholy skies, the joy and the music of her memory. Thank you.
is who I am. It is what I am. I was once a man. I know the evil men do. Do not bring your evil here. I warn you. Beware the wrath of Swamp Thing. I didn't think I'd ever stop using Tylenol. And I didn't, really. I still use it for aches and pains and stuff like that, but for headaches, I stopped taking it. Our wedding day. Ziploc, it's all you need. I bought it. Retro science. <laughs> Retro fiction. It's amazing. Retro TV. Friday at 3 a.m. Some folks tend to carry a grudge a mile too far, as my dear daddy, bless his soul, used to say. How you doing? Okay. I get the feeling you've got something on your mind. How come you didn't cry, Mom? Well, I cried when I heard. I did too. I get the feeling you don't want to go home. You know what we should do, Jim? Stay here, right in this house. Just the two of us. What about your job? Eh, I can always get another job. But nobody else can do this job. Being your mom. Grandma said I have a tenure. She was playing some Moonlight song on the piano, and I thought it was neat. So she tried to teach it to me. But I just couldn't get the hang of it. I kept thinking I was singing the tune, but it kept coming out, da, da, da. And she said she loved me, even though I have a tenure. Bad join you. Oh, uh, well, I, I was on my way down. Yeah, 
come to speak to you with your boy about the shooting in the cemetery. Well, now, the uh, sheriff already questioned him. What'd he look like? The man who shot at Sheriff Andrews. I'm okay, Mom. Go on down. I don't remember what he looked like. Is that the truth? He looked like he had a broken arm. It was in a sling. Which arm? Right or left? Right. The Swamp Thing Marathon is sponsored by Clausen Pickle. It's hard to believe the idea escaped us until now. Introducing new Clausen Sandwich Slices. A perfect fit for a perfect sandwich. New Clausen Sandwich Slices. Even sliced up. They're crunchy. 
Sure, I love Dow Smart Scrub. It rinses clean without the gritty residue. Everything you need to learn will be delivered to your door so you can get a degree or diploma in your spare time. Call now for free information from ICS. Then decide if you want to train at home for a better career to make more money. Call 1-800-850-8600. There's absolutely no obligation. That's 1-800-850-8600 for free career information. Take it you're another one of Arcane's glorious failures? Did you take my rifle? No. Did you see who did? Why do you need a rifle? <laughs> Anybody listening in on us would think that we're just a couple of guys passing the time of day, when in fact... In fact? You are... Whatever you are, and I am what I am. And I'm not a man. I'm speaking of firearms, of course. It's right where you left it. Where it belongs. <clears throat> At least he gave you special powers. Dr. Arcane. Who the hell else? I missed him. All these weeks of searching and planning, and I missed him. And now, how the hell am I going to try again? Hell is a word that comes easily to you. It's where I live. You're not from this neighborhood, then. I don't mean to minimize your anguish. You don't know anything about my anguish. It's probably not too different from my own. Oh? You mean... You don't enjoy being some kind of a, a mossy magician? Sorry. You look pretty well adjusted to me. Whatever I am, I am not a murderer. Are you? Not yet. Then why become one? What did Dr. Arcane do to you? Just this. There are so many beautiful birds in the world. Why would he want to change a man into one? I was a bird. I was a peregrine falcon. As free as the wind. Dr. Arcane decided to make a man of me. But a man you must be. For as long as you live. I know that. And I hate it! I hate being part of the human race! I hate what they do to one another. What they do to the earth and sky. I'm ashamed to be one of them. I want to be what nature meant me to be. I want to fly again. A man can fly on the wings of his spirit, but not if the spirit is weighted down with bitterness and hatred or stained with blood. Why would you want a man like him to live? I want you to live the way you are. Be what you are. And you'll fly again. How? Oh, with this?
about it. You know whose obscene work this is. Nature gives life. Nature takes life. Nature is a maniac. It's okay to mourn for her, Jim. But you have to realize, it was her time, and you must go on. She would want you to. It's an old cliche, but time will heal the wound. You'll see. Since you've decided to relocate here, I hope we can become better acquainted. I'm a bit more optimistic than that. How about dinner tomorrow night?
I'll take care of Jim. Let me handle it. <coughs> Go home, Jim. Get some rest. I can make it. Can a bird save a boy's life? When he started to breathe, when I, when I realized I had made him live again, it was like I was flying. Observe, dry eyes, red eyes, symptoms for which science created clear eyes. Unlike the other leading eye drop, clear eyes removes redness and as an ingredient to moisturize. The difference is clear. Clear eyes. Would you like to try new Snackwell's cereal bars? Snackwell's for breakfast? Mm -hmm. mm. Say, this is delicious. And they're the only cereal bar that's fat-free. Can I have another? I'm sorry. I only have so many. New fat-free Snackwell's cereal bars. So good, can we ever make enough? Sci-Fi Channel premiere feature, Saturday, June 10th at 8, 5 Pacific. Take four bizarre excursions. Where am I? Where one's only boundary is imagination. <laughs> where wishes come true. Oh, my God. And where nightmares become reality. Can you imagine a naked man crawling along the wing of an airplane at 35,000 feet? Your next stop, Twilight Zone, the movie. Thursday night at 9, 8 central on USA. Scare me. He's made your heart pound with fright, your palms sweat with fear, and your body tremble with terror. Now he's back to do it again. Stephen King's Golden Years, part of the sci-fi series collection. Tomorrow at 9 p.m., 6 Pacific. Memorial Day means parades, barbecues, parties. But the best thing is the Sci-Fi Channel's pulse-pounding, spine-tingling, 18-hour Swamp Thing Marathon. Swamp Fever continues next.
still dreaming? Smart Scrub. It rinses clean without the gritty residue. But what they need is a bleach formula for stains. Oh, never mind. Presenting new Smart Scrub cleanser with bleach. Smart enough to clean up after itself. Mm. <laughs> Got something different for your sensitive teeth. Well, you can take it back. My dentist wants me to use Sensodyne. This is Sensodyne. Sensodyne with baking soda. No pain. My mouth feels fresh and clean. Sensodyne with baking soda. All you feel is fresh and clean. Return to the beginning and witness how legends are born. The Sci-Fi Channel's third annual Pilot Playhouse. Saturday and Sunday, beginning at 7 p.m. Every day, America Online is making it easier for people to live, work, and play. Hey, Dan, ready for the game? I can't go to the game today. What? I gotta send my mom a birthday gift, then book plane tickets for our trip next week, and my kids gotta go to the library to look up dinosaurs. Hey, we can take care of that right now with America Online. We can? Yeah, we can send your mom flowers, order those plane tickets. We can even look up dinosaurs in Compton's Encyclopedia. With America Online, you get instant news and sports, financial updates, online magazines, and easy access to the internet. Internet. Call now for your free America Online Startup Kit and 10 free online hours. Flowers are sent, plane tickets are booked, here come the dinosaurs. That's great. Downloading's easy. I can even send an email on the internet. And we'll check it all out later, after the game. So, how do you get America Online? Well, that's easy too. You just call their 800 number. Call 1-800-347-9191 now for your free America Online Startup Kit with free software and 10 free online hours. It's everything you need to get online, so call 1-800-347-9191. Do you need help? <coughs> Didn't your mom ever tell you not to run outside without your shirt and shoes on? Right. Here, come on. You live here? Uh, yeah, I, I know it's a little small. It's wonderful. But... Sure. I would like something hot to drink. How did you know that's what I was going to ask you? No big deal. I know what people are thinking sometimes. My name's Abigail. What do you do here? Don't you want to know my name first? Oh. I never ask people their names until I'm sure I want to know them. Okay, have it your way. I work downstairs in the restaurant. You cook? Back at the government house, I used to... So what's your specialty? Oh, uh, dishwashing. Do you, do you like Cajun food? I never had it. I never had a lot of things. I'm not very experienced. I got exploded off a boat tonight. That was an experience. Sorry, it's not very warm, but... That was my dream. A, a boat exploded, and there's fire raining down everywhere, and there's this, this girl. You! Probably. I stumble into people's dreams a lot. It's kind of like spilling the milk at the dinner table. You, this is... This is all too weird. I'm calling the sheriff. Wait. 
I know I sound kind of strange. I'm not hurt. It's just... I get a feeling sometimes. Like when I was a little girl. I'd play in the bioaquatic orchards and they had all these pomegranate trees. Well, I was too little to reach the tree limbs, so I'd take the ones that had fallen to the ground and I'd cut them open and I'd eat all those juicy red seeds. But sometimes I'd get one that would ferment and, well, it would make me feel all lightheaded, like I was going to float away. I know this must all sound pretty strange to you. A lot of strange things have been happening to me. It's not a birthmark. It's a laser tattoo. But you know, that's what I was thinking. Never mind. <laughs> you want to touch it? It's not going to bite. Abigail, why, why would you have something like that on your leg? Where did you come from? It's where I'm going that's a lot more interesting. And why do you ask so many questions? Listen, I don't have anything right now except this blanket. Can I keep it? Of course. Thanks. What I was trying to say before was, well, if you don't hold me, I think I'm going to float away. What is your name? Privacy. Privacy is what I have in my own home. Dr. Arcane, our reports say that the baby may... Honor it! Or take the consequences! Mm -hmm. formula to the supple nape of your neck to prove your love and trust in me to prove it worked I wasn't ready to turn you it took your breath from me ever since then I've been looking for the key to bring you back I've been asked to continue the work on Dr. Woodrow's Phylogenetic transformation. It could be an excellent opportunity to prove to them that I'm far superior to Dr. Woodrow. And of course, a chance for me to bring you back, my darling. Sweet Titania. There is no other goal in my life. Dr. Arkeen. What? What could possibly be so important for you to disturb me here? General Sunderland. Medical of miracles, Dr. Arcane. You've been located. I was checking the heating system on the amniotic fluid tank, sir. Have you disposed of Dr. Woodrow's experiments? Completely destroyed in a cargo ship accident last night. No survivors. Dr. Woodrow is hyper-scrupulous. A brilliant mind, perhaps greater than even yours. 
However, 20 years on one project would bring down even the most sagacious scientist. You will not be disappointed, General. Go back to your tanks, Doctor. Oh, and uh, happy anniversary. And I still have two good ones left. <laughs> they say college grads can't fend for themselves. Oh, this ought to have enough swamp lore to keep the tourists happy. And then comes fishing season. Excuse me, but isn't the sign facing the wrong way? Now, how could that have happened? Don't ask me. You're the college graduate. Oh, <laughs> hi. You must hi. be Abigail. We'll phone me about you. I'm not going to be any trouble staying here, am I? I'll cook every night if you want. Oh, deal. Means I can call my stomach back from vacation. I don't suppose you'll be wanting to stick around to sample any cooking. What? No. Sure, I'd, I'd love to sample. Sure you would. Who's dressing you these days? Oh, I didn't have any. Will lent me some things. We burn them as soon as you freshen up. Well, I'm sure I have some things that'll fit you. From my high school days. Come on. You're welcome to stay as long as you want. It'll be nice to have another person around here for a change. I must get Will here. Swampy. You were calling me, weren't you? I need your help. The infant's dying. <laughs> this baby, I, I've seen it before. In my dream, it, it was... It was not a dream. Well, then what was it? I don't know anything about... Professor the... Abigail! Call Dr. Hollister! The closest I've seen to this is the Oleansky baby back in 62. Uh, something about bad blood. But without a full workup, I'm just blowing straw wrappers in the dark. Oh, Dr. Hollister, I'll pay whatever it costs. Oh, don't insult me, Tress. It's not about lab costs, specialists, and equipment. All of which is down in Bowman. I'll call Medivac. They may be able to helicopter her out. How much time is there? Yeah, this is Dr. Hollister over in Huma. I've got a medical emergency. I'll hold. We may have already run out of time. The Oleansky baby died in my arms before I got her to the hospital. Dr. Arcane, I just overheard a medevac request from Dr. Hollister in town. People get sick all the time. It's not my concern. This one may be. The patient was found in the swamp. A female newborn. I tried to tell you before. Get that baby. Return to the Swamp Thing Marathon after this. It's hard to believe the idea escaped us until now. Introducing new Clausen Sandwich Slices. A perfect fit for a perfect sandwich. New Clausen Sandwich Slices. Even sliced up, they're crunchy. Would you like to try new Snackwell cereal bars? Snackwells for breakfast? Mmm. -hmm. Mm. Say, this is delicious. And the care your child receives. But this precious package is free with no obligation. So call now for the photo and case history of one little child who needs you. Call 1-800-931-2900. That's 1-800-931-2900.
by your boat, I might still, still be able to catch you. Oh, forget it. They pulled the fuel line. Look, tighten the line and I'll get some more gas. Well, I didn't want to say anything before while Tressa was here. But I saw something right before the baby was kidnapped. She had the same birthmark as mine. But what is that supposed to mean? I spent my entire life at a government house, alone, except for a watcher and some teachers and Dr. Woodrow. You heard of test tube babies? Is that what you are? Great. I just get used to talking to a plant and now I know a test tube who can cook. I'm one step further than just a test tube. They didn't need human genes to make me. Something about synthetic DNA. Thing is, a few days ago they cleared everything out, packed it up, and put it all on a boat, including me. I thought we were moving somewhere. It's more like they were throwing me away. Throwing you away? <laughs> Why? Dr. Woodrow always said he was disappointed in the way that I turned out. That means. It means he's either blind or a complete idiot. Wait, what about what about the baby? I guess she was on the boat with me. I never saw her at the house. There were all these rooms that I wasn't allowed in where experiments were going on. There's just so much I don't know. Don't worry, we're gonna find that out soon enough. That's the problem. Even if we find the baby and we bring her back, there's nothing anybody can do. No matter how big of a hospital that we take her to. Like me, she's one of a kind. There's no one in the world that can save her. What do you suppose Arcane's gonna do with this baby? Dispose of it. He wants no evidence. Suddenly lost steering, could have hit some swamp grass. You better check the rudder, I'll start her up again. Just say the only difference between him and me is that I do not rest on the seventh day. You're not God. You're a garbage man. Your mistake is that some of what you dispose of is human life. Well, that wasn't a mistake. That was the raison d'etre. See, evolution takes about as long as the French opera to get on with it, and we can't wait. I'm concerned with immediate result. I'm concerned with life. The infant. Yes, yeah, she is dying, poor soul. 
But if you want me to give you some magic cure to help one of Dr. Woodrow's blunders, well, excuse the commonality, but needle in haystacks brings to mind. The infant is in hemolytic crisis. Plant still thinks like a scientist. This is not a game. It's human life. I have not killed you in the past because to kill you is to become you. A dubious distinction at best. Tell me now, what will save that baby? Hydrooxacinic acid in these tanks. But it must be carefully bioprocessed through protein mass to be effective. And that technology is light years away. For you, maybe. But for a plant, a walk in the park. No, you don't! I now have the formula to save your life. Take her. Cure her. How? My fingers pulse with life and power. They form life. But they're not delicate enough to save a dying baby. Use this. Pomegranate? The amino acids in the seeds will save her. Go, now. You found her! How? I can't explain. Well, I'll call Dr. Hollister. There's no time. What are you doing? Dressa, it's all right. It's just pomegranate juice. And it'll work, just like it did with me. So that's why I like pomegranates. You're both crazy! I'm calling the doctor. No, believe me. It won't do any good. This is our only chance. Pomegranates? Like, Abigail, I don't know what Middle Ages you crawled out from, but in the modern world... I didn't think I'd ever stop using Tylenol. And I didn't, really. I still use it for aches and pains and stuff like that, but for headaches, I stopped taking it. Yeah. Now I take Excedrin. Why Excedrin? Because I studied all the medical research. No, I tried Excedrin. It relieved my headaches better. Why else would anybody take it? Excedrin, the headache medicine. Here's the latest. The deep down cleaning power of Lysol joins the stain removing power of bleach in new Lysol Plus Bleach All Purpose Cleaner, an unbeatable bleach cleaner with three times more cleaners than the leading bleach cleaner to power out stains and tough dirt. New Lysol Plus Bleach, a superpower in cleaning. After you clean your floor, does it feel sticky? Try new Mop & Glow Floor Cleaner. It cleans in one step and doesn't leave a sticky residue, so there's no need to rinse. With new Mop & Glow No Rinse Floor Cleaner, you won't get stuck having to rinse. Unlike some toilet bowl cleaners, Lysol Toilet Bowl Cleaner cleans and disinfects. Now, is disinfection that important? You get it. It's your ball. You decide. Lysol Toilet Bowl Cleaner for a deep down clean. Don't go there when you're hurt. And don't go there when you're sick. Because in this hospital, there is something worse than germs. Blue Monkey. Saturday at 4, 1 Pacific. Welcome to the Dominion. The gateway to the world of science fiction on the Internet. The Dominion. Catch it on the World Wide Web. The Sci-Fi Channel welcomes you to the edge. Dr. Hollister said the crisis is over. 
The baby's fine. <laughs> oh, there's the foster parents. Doc says if they work out, they could adopt her permanently. Come on, let's meet them. In a minute. Just a few more nails. You've got enough nails in that board to land a plane on it. Why don't you want to meet the new couple? Ever since I can remember, I've had this dream about mom and dad driving up in this big dusty car and telling me that I was their daughter. That they were going to take me home. Kind of like what's going on over there. Looks good, huh? Now the whole world can read it. That's right. Nothing's any good if you turn your back to it. Come on. Let's go meet a dream of yours. restores the body of a plant each night. But underneath is still the soul of a man. Memorial Day means parades, barbecues, parties. But the best thing is the Sci-Fi Channel's pulse-pounding, spine-tingling, 18-hour Swamp Thing Marathon. Swamp Fever continues next. annual Pilot Playhouse, Saturday and Sunday, beginning at 7 p.m. Eastern. Memorial Day means parades, barbecues, parties. But the best thing is the Sci-Fi Channel's pulse-pounding, spine-tingling, 18-hour Swamp Thing Marathon. Swamp Fever continues next. Not again! 
They can't be gone. There, there must be some I haven't found. Maybe it's better to live in a dream when the world itself is a nightmare. teas are the same. Let's take a blind taste test and listen. Try this first iced tea. Uh. Now try this one. Yeah. Sounds like a winner. In a blind taste test, Nest Tea beat Snapple by a sound margin. day for popcorn fish or chicken. It's big fish. Delicious bite-sized pieces of crispy all-white fish or chicken for you. Can you pop them? Pop them, slam them, dunk them. How about a hook? New popcorn fish or chicken. Just $1.99 for a quarter pound in fries at Long John Silver's. Where great fish is a big deal. <laughs> Who says big fish can't jump? Hi, Finn! They left the dance floor empty. That mob just wouldn't rest. Seems the sauce on Lester's chicken just hadn't passed the test. Suddenly they hushed and turned to a stranger on the hill who with a double dose of bullseye said, go on. Fire up that grill. Well, they poured it on and their smile said, yes, that big bowl taste tasted best. The big bowl taste of bullseye tastes the best. Now try new bullseye steakhouse style. Steak never had it so bold. to the world of science fiction on the internet. Catch it on the World Wide Web. The Sci-Fi Channel welcomes you to the edge. Alec? Hey. Hey, are you all right? Go away. I haven't seen you since you started working on your cure. Is, is this part of it? I want to be alone with her. Come on, Alec. Talk to me, huh? Leave us alone. Us? What do you mean, us? Anne. She's waiting for me. Alec. We're going away. I found freedom, Will. Freedom? What do you mean? Freedom from what? I was searching for a cure. And I accidentally found freedom from these shriveled roots you see, and the dead branches. With this, I can live. That stuff's got you drugged, Alec. Go home, Will. No, drugs only put you back in the same place, only feeling worse. Nothing could be worse than to be condemned to live here, like this. That's garbage, man. I got friends who've been strung out all over the place. They all spout the same damn line. The only thing is that the longer that you stay drugged up, the more you're gonna feel sorry for yourself. First thing we gotta do is get this monkey off your back. Give me those eggs. No. I'll get Anne out here. She'll make you understand what you're doing to yourself.
It's Will Kip. Oh dear. What a shame. You're going to help him, aren't you, Anton? Um, you are a doctor, after all. Yes, of course. Uh, the doctor. It must be so wonderful to be able to help people like this. Yes. It's all in the hands, dear. Amazing. Beta activity in a Delta state. We have something of a dilemma here, Graham. We found no traces of drugs or alcohol in the Jeep, yet he shows every sign of being heavily intoxicated. Maybe he just got knocked out in the accident. Maybe. I want you to check the Jeep again. And I mean, check everything completely. Meanwhile, I should endeavor to enjoy the rest of my evening. resemble the chemical structures of LSD and opium. From an egg? Iguanus morphicus. And I can tell you this, you don't see many of those about. Of course, I won't be sure until I uh, receive a specimen intact. Do you think he'll tell us? Well, he won't have much choice, will he? Put him in observation. Poor boy will need his sleep before we question him. Such simple pleasures. How I've missed them. Alec. Come dance with me. story but this had something to do with it what are you talking about i want you to tell me where you got this eggshell eggs are bad for you too much cholesterol cocky little twit isn't he these are special eggs are they not it's a complex world will people need escape this might just be the ticket now where are they Make no mistake, 
This drug means immense wealth and power to the person who controls it, and I intend to be that person. I can't remember. Oh, good. Well, let's see what some high oxygen pentothal does for your memory. Goodbye. Pentothal's interacting with the drug already in the system. It'll drive him insane if it doesn't kill him first. The art of persuasion has its risks, Graham. The Swamp Thing Marathon is sponsored by Clausen Pickle. Here's the latest. The deep down cleaning power of Lysol joins the stain removing power of bleach in new Lysol Plus Bleach All Purpose Cleaner, an unbeatable bleach cleaner with three times more cleaners than the leading bleach cleaner to power out stains and tough dirt. New Lysol Plus Bleach, a superpower in cleaning. <laughs> After you clean your floor, does it feel sticky? Try new Mop and Glow Floor Cleaner. It cleans in one step and doesn't leave a sticky residue, so there's no need to rinse. With new Mop and Glow No Rinse Floor Cleaner, you won't get stuck having to rinse. Some toilet bowl cleaners, Lysol toilet bowl cleaner cleans and disinfects. Now, is disinfection that important? You get it, it's your ball. You decide. Lysol toilet bowl cleaner for a deep down clean. Mmm, looks terrific. Is that beef stew you're cooking? Yes. And I'm also studying a course in computer programming. You're probably thinking you don't have the time to train for a better career, even if it means more money. But you do with ICS. Just call this 800 number for free information on training at home with ICS. Choose from high school, TV VCR repair, computer programming, electrician, animal care specialist, auto mechanics, PC repair, bookkeeping, legal assistant, medical office assistant, hotel restaurant management, learning the personal computer, electronics, or get your degree. You can major in business management or accounting. If I had to rush off to night school, I'd miss reading to Jimmy. It's one of the few moments that we have to spend together. Everything you need to learn will be delivered to your door, so you can get a degree or diploma in your spare time. Call now for free information from ICS. Then decide if you want to train at home for a better career to make more money. Call 1-800-850-8600. There's absolutely no obligation. That's 1-800-850-8600 for free career information. Come back. How'd I do? You won. What if the flower had said, I loved you not? not. Then I'd find a new flower and start all over again. Holland is addicted. Now, if you'll tell me where he is and where the eggs are... I told you! I don't know what you're talking about. Such loyalty. It's truly amazing. You should take note of this, Graham. Now, listen. We can have a nice little chat here, you and I. Or you can be the first to experience the effects of this marvelous new drug. 
as augmented by my own special research, of course. It's your choice. No? Very well. En voyage. What have you done with them? Holland. 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 No. No. Leave me. Get out of my mind. the doctor all he needs to know he doesn't need you anymore besides he doesn't like his upholstery stained when it can be avoided you stupid twit Alec, you've got to help me find him. What's happened? He's, he's gotten a hold of some kind of lizard eggs in the swamp. They're, they're drugging him and he's addicted. What? But Alec would No, have... I'm telling you. Listen to me. He doesn't even know it's real anymore. He's in a bad way. I'll get dressed. Where should we go? We go. Oh, far away. Wherever you want. The swamp. Time to return home, my friend. No. No, no. No! No, 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 no. You must go back. Now. I just left you. Careful. That stuff got to me, too. How long has he been like this? A week. Maybe more. He was working on his cure, and he, he got a hold of these eggs somehow. Damn it, Alec. We were supposed to work on this together. Anne. Alec, talk to me, please. The eggs. I need the eggs. No, I won't let you. You can't stop me. Stop it. Now listen to me. I must get back to you. Please. 
Alec, that's not the answer. Whatever you're seeing is a fantasy. It's not real. I held you in my arms tonight, and I kissed you. I touched your hair. We sipped wine together, the finest wine. And we loved. Find a way out for you, together, I swear. We won't give up till we do. You're not alone in this, I'm gonna help you. I'm right here for you. Alec, you mean a lot to me more than I realized. Ah, well, this is very touching. A junkie pleading for his fix. I'm sorry we interrupted you. We did try to get here a bit early, but uh, Graham here seems to be in a bit of pain. You followed me here. Of course I followed you. What do you think? You uh, escaped on your own? I helped. Yes, you did. Very good job. Now, I would like the eggs, please. They aren't for you. Look, I've no intention of debating this with you. It's a transmitter on the carotid artery. Pentothal didn't work, you see, so this would be what you would call plan B. Now, I would like the eggs, or I kill him. Your choice. There are no more eggs. Let him breathe, you lunatic! Every wino, every junkie has his own private little stash. Hidden away. Very well. This is the last one. In my selfishness, I've nearly made them extinct. You're lying, Doctor. Look around you. You really can't just say no, can you? you? Must be very addictive. Give it to me. First the transmitter. Lovely holding hands with you, Doc. I'll be leaving now. Leave without the egg, or I'll crush the entire contents into your bloodstream, and you will die. Okay. I've got a shard back at the lab. I can always make a synthetic. Come up and see us sometime. You need a fix. Never tell me. No one is immune to temptation, not even me. But drugs are not the answer. They will only destroy you. No goalie! This hockey team's in trouble! You with the pretzels! Get in there! I think these new royal gold pretzels are fat free. Unbelievable! <laughs> Must be the pretzels. It must be the pretzels! Yes! Are you okay? Like monstrosities, angry automatons, computerized killers. Oh gosh! Oh gee, look, there's... The Sci-Fi Channel's Robot Rampage begins June 19th. There's only one cure for Swamp Fever. I want to help you. The Sci-Fi Channel's Swamp Thing Marathon continues next. Don't go to County Memorial Hospital when you're sick. You may never recover. There's something much worse than germs here. A terrifying strain of insect that feeds on helpless human victims. Blue Monkey, Saturday at 4 p.m., 1 Pacific. Memorial Day means parades, barbecues, parties. But the best thing is the Sci-Fi Channel's pulse-pounding, spine-tingling, 18-hour Swamp Thing Marathon. Swamp Fever continues next.
watching the Sci-Fi Channel. I have never stopped trying. When I allow my scientist mind to ponder this peculiar phenomenon that is my life, You're watching USA, America's favorite cable network. The following story of paranormal activity is based on reported incidents. Exactly for your bedroom wall. How do you know? How do you know him? Who? Frosted Flakes fans got a sweet spot. Hit it with a sweet shot. Wheat is honey go. Going, going. Crispy corn, whole grain wheat. Gone. Hit your spot. Crunch and sweet. Crunch it. Touch of honey is what it's got. To put her there. Gotta have it. Wanna hit your sweet spot? Right down the middle. Hit it with a sweet shot. Wheat is honey go. Jason Bateman. Michael Bean. Hey, I just want to be friends. A Taste for Killing on USA, Sunday night at 8. I'm just saying, I want to know your secret. What secret? You know, you're no slouch as a teacher yourself. Yeah, you, you, you mesmerize those kids. Oh, why do you say that? Well, it's true. I mean, I've never seen a classroom that quiet. Those kids were hanging on every word. <laughs> or taking a group nap. <laughs> Elizabeth? No, 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 no. It's, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Come on. Come on. I'm so sorry, Dr. Stillman. I'm... Uh, this, this is Laura. She works with me. How do you do? Elizabeth used to be a patient of mine. What are you doing here? I saw him. He came back. I have been taking my medication, but he came back. Have you talked to Dr. Greenlee? He's on vacation. I, I'm supposed to see Dr. Um... Walton. Well, maybe we should call him. What's his number? No, you don't understand. It, it wasn't like the other times. I saw him in a painting. Or at least I think I saw him. Then I scared people. I just finally thought that maybe I was going to be okay. But how could that artist know Pitt?
Pitt? He didn't have Pitt's eye, but... Um, Pitt is a... Uh, monster. Elizabeth's world used to have her as the only person in it. The others were inhuman, ruled over by Pitt. I was alone. Dr. Stillman came in and led me out of there. Medication started to have an effect. It was more than that. You were the only one who tried to see what I saw, who really understood. Thanks. But uh, I don't practice anymore. I know that. I know you're a professor of... Um... The paranormal. Yes, right. But if that painter is inside my head, what is that? Normal, normal? Elizabeth, look, I think the best way to start is with Dr. Walton. Just, just c come with me to the gallery and tell me what you see. If, you... if I am crazy again, then I am crazy again, but I, but I just... <laughs> if I go with you to the gallery, will you see Dr. Walton? Anything, 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 please, just... I want this one chance. Look at them. You saw, you saw the paintings and? Well, they do bear a strong resemblance to what you described. So they aren't just in my mind. Well, they bear a resemblance, but Elizabeth, the way they set you off. Uh... Mr. Barker? Hi, I'm Dr. Stillman. I understand Miss Wade did uh, some damage to one of your paintings last night. My stuff was the talk of the night after that. You feeling better now? He's there, under that sheet. Your work is uh, quite distinctive. You mean too weird to buy? I notice you always paint the same figure. Recently, yeah. Images started coming into focus. They're uh, similar to a creature that Ms. Wade used to have delusions about. Oh, I get it. Look, I'm sorry, I don't know where it comes from. It comes from me. You think you gave me this? No! You know, there are common images that people share. Archetypes. You tell me what part you painted. The torso and uh, the right side of the face. On his ear, a burr. White thorns like claws. Five of them. You show them. Did you have any here like that last night? I wonder if you might consider coming back to the lab. No, no, you've got to destroy it, destroy them all! It will grow, and it will wrap itself around you, and you will be trapped! He's got to listen. He doesn't know. You will listen now. Maybe. It's going to make him sick. He is sick. Operator, I'd like the number for Elizabeth Wade. Painting's all I've ever done my whole life since I can remember. My mom says she's still got drawers full of paintings from when I was like three or four. I don't know. She probably doesn't. It wasn't that interesting to her. You all right? 
It's only canvas. That's all anybody. It's only. Every time I paint, it's blurry. It's like needing glasses with no prescription. <laughs> you, you see it clear. What does your mother think of your paintings now? I don't know. She's never seen them, I never see her. Who do you see? Nobody, in the way you're suggesting, I think, nobody. Don't look at me like I'm sad or lonely or something. I'm not sad or lonely or something. Okay. I'm a very happy woman myself. Is it hard being sick? Yes, it is. The hardest part is it never goes away. And the hardest, hardest part is admitting that it never, ever will. You mustn't want to see it clear. He rules a world where everyone's a thing and they grab at you and they try to hold you down until he can come and turn you into a thing too. Oh, you mustn't paint his eye. I've never seen his eyes. It's not eyes. I. where there is no bottom. It's spinning round and round like you see in a bathtub drain. Okay. He's off my pallet. You know, it was cases like Elizabeth's that first got me into the paranormal. Chemicals, electrical impulses, but change the balance just a little, and you get... Hallucinations like Pitt. But change it some other way, and you get people who can guess playing cards and pick up thoughts. I started to wonder if I wasn't looking at something much bigger. Miracles. Miracles? If anything is. All those years. All those years, I thought they were wasted, but they were for something. What's up? Daniel, he listened, he listened to me. About what? The paintings. He called me over to his studio and I told him what I saw and what he would see if he didn't stop. He called you and wanted to know? About Pitt and about what I was afraid of. Well, mostly he knew, you saw, but he didn't have the eye. And telling him was enough. Enough to get him to stop. No. What? Where? What's wrong? Look, I know artists. They don't stop. <sighs> no answer.
Hey, honey, how did your checkup go today? Oh, the vet said I'm fine, and he had some advice about our pet odor problem. He recommended Arm & Hammer Pet Fresh. It absorbs carpet odors naturally with baking soda, and veterinarians tested Pet Fresh to be sure it won't irritate our pets. Why, the house smells so fresh, you'd never know we had pets. That's natural freshness from the baking soda experts. Arm & Hammer Pet Fresh Carpet Deodorizer. Safe around pets. Recommended by vets. Oof. Running my own business is great. Whew. Especially when I'm planting these beauties. You'd think he was planting stinkweed. <laughs> Presenting Ultra Gain. Lucky for me, I got this green thumb. Lucky for him, I've got this little scoop. Ultra Gain's concentrated power gets clothes so clean, they'll smell like they were dried in the sunshine. I know he lives for his work. <laughs> Now I can live with him. Ultra Gain, the clean you can tell by the sunshine smell. <laughs> yeah. Take me out to the ball game. Na, 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 na. Buy me something at and Cracker Jacks. Na, 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 na. Summertime means peanuts, Cracker Jacks, and cold brew. But if you don't want the alcohol, make it a Jenny N.A. Jenny N.A. For those times that call for a Jenny, but don't call for alcohol. No, no. The best way to decide what furniture is right for your home is to see it in our home, the Thomasville Gallery. Beautiful Thomasville furniture in every style and a wealth of decorating ideas. Here's quality and craftsmanship you can see and touch. The Thomasville Gallery. Room after room of beautiful furniture, beautifully made. Save now on Thomasville at the Joseph Corey Furniture Gallery, Main Street next to the Arch in Johnson City. It's all right, Elizabeth. You can come in now. The way he tore out of here, i never seen a man so scared. I gave him his nightmare. didn't tell him to paint it. He made that choice. I can go after him. I can find him. I can bring him back. There's no proof you and Dan are having the same experience. Oh, I can feel it. A hundred, hundred times I have been exactly where Dan is now. I can find him. It's too dangerous. That world trapped you once. We'll, we'll find another way. Don't go near him. I, 
I'm the one who can. let her wander around in here all on her own. I, I worked with her. I, I know her. If she says she can do this, she can. Sound and I'm only I'm all I'm turned around now. I it's everywhere and I, I can't I can't find my way out. I can't I can... painting. Painting was your way in. We can go back there. You can do this. You can. He's too strong. We can't beat him. He's coming. Oh, no. Elizabeth, look at it. He'll make you go back.
So you just got a cash advance, did you? Too bad you used an ordinary credit card. Because you could be carrying some very heavy interest charges. Why not carry the Discover card? Just pay your full monthly balance and a small transaction. How the hell did you reverse your condition? How's it going, Anton? Swamp Thing on USA. Coming up next. Stay tuned to USA, America's favorite cable network. Inside a hidden treasure lies a hidden horror on The Hitchhiker, tonight at 10. Then a malfunctioning birth machine made their son's birthday a day to forget. Carol Kane and Michael Saracen star on an all-new Ray Bradbury Theater, tonight at 10.30. But first, a secret formula brings Alec back to human form on an all-new Swamp Thing, next on USA. America's favorite cable network. Not another one. <sighs> Calm down, little guy. I'm not the one that set this trap. Looks like you scraped your wing. Street Noise, Monday, Wednesday, and weekends, only on Wham! A nice idea. I know, officer. I knew we should. It is, boys, your new European home. Wow, Mom, there's a castle. It looks neat. It looks damp. I bet a vampire lives there. It's a perfect place for him to wait for sunset. Well, we wait for Max to grow up. Isn't it just how you imagined it would be? How'd you get Hansel and Gretel living? Come on, Chris. Oh, I'm sorry, guys, I forgot to tell you. They changed my schedule again. I have to go to Madrid tomorrow. 
I thought it was London. Oh, no, honey, that's the day after. I thought we were going to get to see you this time. Well, you are, hon. That's why I've flown you over. We're going to be a lot closer here than with you in Philadelphia. Welcome in. <laughs> Bienvenue. Welcome. Come inside, will you? It's terribly bright out here. Come. Come, come. <laughs> Guys, um, this is your Uncle Gustav. Gustav, this is I recognize Max. him from their pictures. Oh. <laughs> this is little Maximilian. Max, please, just Max. And this is Christopher. <laughs> Who loses easily? <laughs> then you must be a peach. <laughs> um, Uncle Gustav? Hmm? Is this what I think it is? A very interesting epistemological question, Max. How can I know what you think? Well, it, it looks like a wooden stake. The kind you'd use to plunge into the blood-gorged chest of a vampire. My goodness. You're exactly right. And to think all these years I've been using it as a doorstop. <laughs> You'll have to excuse Max, Gustav. He's a little obsessed with the supernatural. A little. Anyway, Max, how do we know that you're not a vampire yourself, the way you wolf down those poppy seeds? What's wrong with them? Huh? Some expert. Vampires cannot resist poppy seeds. They're absolutely mad about If you're going to venture into the world of the undead young man, you had better know the nature of the beast. Hello, Miss Townsend. Uncle Gustav? Oh, gentlemen, may I present Miss Sophie Metternick? She stays here when she goes to school. You live here? Yes. Shouldn't I? Uh, Chris Townsend? Uh, I love astronomy and uh, rap. And I'm older than I look, and uh, I think I'm ready for a truly giving relationship. Hello. And this is Maximilian. Max, please. Just Max. <laughs> Come on, guys. I'll show you to your rooms. Then we have to change and get going. We just got here. I know, but I'm invited to a reception at the embassy this afternoon. You guys can come along. I'll go to catch just a bit of MTV till you're done. Oh, honey, I don't think Uncle Gustav gets MTV. <laughs> I don't remember you mentioning that, Mom. Uh, look, there's the ambassador. We can introduce you in a minute. Maybe he's a vampire. Looks like he hasn't been outside in a while. There's Alexander Lucard. Now that's exciting. I can hardly contain myself. No, no, he owns Lucard Enterprises. Banking, real estate, and chemicals. He's one of the richest men in the world. Not even in the top ten, I'm afraid. <laughs> Alexander Lucard. Eileen Townsend, Pennsylvania Industrial Bank. Yes, I know. You've made quite a splash in the last few weeks. That Eurobond deal was very interesting. Thank you. Oh, these are my boys, Chris and Max. They just arrived today. How are you like? I want my MTV. Well, you can have it if you own a satellite. How else would I watch Young MC? You're into rap and hip hop and some ska. I'll tell you what, Chris. Here's my card. Call my people if ever you get homesick for a little rap. Yes, thanks. I will. Welcome. Welcome, Max. I mean. Well, if you're going to be in Europe, you might as well have some friends, right? Mm -hmm. Face it, Max. Your search for vampires is a bust. That's it. Uncle Gustav hates garlic. And did you notice that there aren't any crosses around either? Maybe he's Jewish. And did you see the way he wolfed down my poppy seeds? He's the one that told you about the poppy seeds. Exactly. Uncle Gustav is a vampire. He's gotta be. Oh, man. What are we gonna do? We'll go to sleep. Oh, sure. But don't blame me if you wake up and he's sucking plasma. I gotta tell Mom. No. At least let her sleep. She's got a flight to catch at 6 a.m. tomorrow. 
Well, then I'll go see Mr. Lacard. He'll know what to do. Great. And until then, go to sleep, okay? Okay. But I'm keeping my guard up. As long as you do it quietly. Oh, Max. Come to catch some videos? I'm afraid it's more serious than that, Mr. Lacard. Well, I'm going to surprise you, Max. I'm not one of those adults who will just ignore you. There are certain things you should know about Gustav Helsing. I knew it. Oh, man, what a dweeb I am. Please, Max. It could happen to anyone. Just leave those. Now, listen to me. I believe you and your brother may be in some danger. I'm expecting an important phone call. Could you give me just a few minutes alone? Then we'll have a talk about what needs to be done. Uh, sure, Mr. Lacard. I'll just be outside. Sure, we can't get MTV out of here? Yes, I'm sure. This is unbelievable. Mm. And we can watch the festival of folklore. It's dances of Poland tonight. Oh, awesome. I know I'm gonna regret this, but I gotta know. Max? Max? Max, what the heck do you think you're doing? Max, you get back here right now. Take the stairs. Good thinking. I get my hands on him. The castle. He's going to Mr. Lucard's castle. I'm gonna kill him. Yep, I'm gonna kill him. Great. thing you've ever done, and believe me, there is lots of competition. Don't be too hard on the boy, Christopher. Max brought you here at my invitation. You were in very great danger, but you are safe now. Under my wing, so to speak. Uh-oh. Go on, run. Raymond! Oh, 
we're in big but trouble. But I'm not home right now. Probably out eating too much schnitzel again. <laughs> but just leave a message at the tone. He's not at home. For the tone, here's a little music. Which means he's not in, right? Okay, uh, which means we gotta go back there. Which means we gotta go save Sophie by ourselves. And don't forget, this is your fault, okay? You might as well try to relax, my dear. Do you know the music? Mozart. Very good. His Mass for the Dead. He died while he was writing it. Funny how things work out. You're him, aren't you? Why, whatever do you mean? You're Dracula. No, I'm Millie Vanilli of of course, I'm Dracula. And you know what? I enjoy being me. Think of the advantages. Forever free to roam the night, collecting. Officer Maria Schmidt, my latest acquisition. Beautiful skin tone. Although yours, is even finer. Wait, I have an idea. What are you doing, you idiot? will find out you have me, and he'll come after you. I sincerely hope so. That was the point of bringing you here, after all. Apart from your beauty, and your blood type, AB negative, I guess. He suspects who you are, you know. Well, of course he does. He's a worthy opponent. Not quite the equal of his great-grandfather, but definitely ahead of his grandfather and father. Legendary vampire hunters, all of them. That's why he must be disposed of. No. I'll start with a little aperitif, I think. I 
believe. I believe. I said I believe. Think I left you safe and sound watching television? Oh, come on, before his creatures find us. It's been a running battle through the centuries, my ancestors and him. I lost track of him several years ago, before he created this newest identity, this Alexander Lucard. You must all learn to trust each other and no one else. I myself spent an evening watching you two sleep to make sure you weren't Lucard's agents. Such snoring. <laughs> it was unbelievable. <laughs> I had to keep my guard up because he's never had such power. Oh, as a count in Transylvania, he could never do more than local harm. But now, with his corporate connections, he's in a position to take over the world. He must be stopped. Maximilian, you have been very quiet. Well, well, it's just that... I mean, I was in the same house, the same room as Dracula. THE Dracula. And I didn't even get his autograph. <laughs> there will be other evenings, Max. I can promise you that. More cocoa, anyone? Coming up next, it's... Are you in the mood for a great movie this weekend? Turn to Wham! This Saturday, an American teen searches for his Indian roots in Praying with Anger. I know nobody's gonna give you a name. The name Wham didn't just fall out of the sky. It came from 12-year-old Tom Jovanovich of St. Cloud, Minnesota. WAM is actually an acronym for what adults are missing. The channel's tagline, America's Youth Network, came from 11-year-old Brian Roy of Morgan City, Louisiana. With a little creative thinking, these two guys won the Name the Channel contest, a family vacation to Colorado, and got to go to Washington, D.C. to launch WAM, America's Youth Network. Thanks, Tom and Brian. The name's Stan, and you made it happen. WAM, America's Youth Network.
Wake up, Max. You're having a nightmare. Wake up. Uh... What's going on here? When am I gonna get a little sleep? Max had a nightmare. Oh, oh. He was in this room. Dracula. I... I dreamt he was right here. Oh, that was scary. There are a lot of things to worry about, Max, but a dream like that isn't one of them. As long as you're in this house, you're protected by the cross of the Magyars. The what? You haven't noticed the big cross over the stairway? It is the reason Lucard can never come in here. Come with me a minute. Come on. There. My family has had that cross for generations. It has complete power over Lucard and anyone like him. They can never enter this house so long as it is there. So you see, Max, your worries are unfounded. on like this all morning. When am I gonna get a little quiet? You talking to me? Take off those earmuffs so you can hear me. Thank you. Thank you. If you're looking for something to do, why don't you read a book? Read? It's good for you. So are vegetables. But I've never seen you eating any. Sauerkraut counts as a vegetable. Besides, we're talking about food for the mind, not the body. Reading is the best way to build a healthy mind, and it can be a lot of fun. Fun? Yes, and useful. Here, try this one. It will tell you how to keep evil away. Are there any pictures? Of course. Hello. Who? Peter Dyson, you old dog. How are you? In town. Is uh, Anna with you? Splendid. How is she? Still asking about me, is she? <laughs> well, if you're going to be in town for the week, why don't you stay here? No, I insist. Wonderful. Couple of hours? Splendid. I'm looking forward to seeing you. Both. We're having company, Max. My old friends Peter and Anna Dyson. I haven't seen them in years. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, Anna and I were quite the pair until I introduced her to my best friend, Peter. The old dog, he stole her right out from under my nose. You, of course, Peter had a more secure future. But I think she always remembered me. Uncle Gustav, when was the last time the cross of the Magyars was blessed? What? Oh, not in years. Uh, I have to run over to Herr Blusens to get a few things for the Dysons. Will you be all right here for a couple of hours? Yeah, but the book says a vampire talisman should be blessed regularly.
Excuse me, is the pastor here? Uh, when will he be back? It's important. Look, Gustav Helsing sent me. You know who he is, don't you? I know where Gustav Helsing lives. Yeah, well, he wants me to get his cross blessed before sundown. Leave it here. I will take care of it. No, never mind. I'll just find someone else. I will take care of it. Leave it here. Sure, okay. I'll just, uh, wander around and uh, check back with you later. Like in an hour, or maybe two. But no later than sundown for sure, okay? Okay. And although I'm aware of the fact that closing the plant in Arven will put hundreds out of work and perhaps kill the town, one must realize that it was an ugly little town anyway. So Anna finally found me sound asleep in the back of a milk <laughs> truck. <laughs> milk carts, you mean? Some of them were still horse drawn in those days. <laughs> we're home. Ah, here they are. Peter and Anna Dyson. This is Sophie, whom you've heard so much about. Hi. And Eileen Townsend's sons, Chris and. Uh, here, where's Max? Uh, we haven't seen him. Well, here be. He'll be back shortly. Come in and join us. We've been friends for almost 40 years. Oh. Do you know that the three of us played together in a band back in the 50s? <laughs> you played in a band? Five flying Dutchmen and a Dutch girl. I played tuba. <laughs> and we weren't even Dutch. <laughs> awesome. Alas, the band broke up when Peter married the Dutch girl. Women always go for the accordion player. I prefer to think Anna was just showing good judgment. Oh, uh, 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 here, let me show you the dance I used to do in the show. Yeah. Ooh, Goosey was a wonderful dancer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Peter, on the other hand, was an absolute menace on the dance floor. <laughs> 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 Oh, oh, Goosey. Oh, Goosey. Oh, 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 that's very good, most promising. Keep me informed. William, have the car ready. I need to transact a little business this afternoon in order to free up my evening. For a little pleasure. is gone from the house. You're absolutely certain. Well, imagine that. No cross in the house and sunset a mere 64 minutes, 15 seconds away. Excellent. I do love a nice sunset. Beautiful. It's charming and full of character. 
character. Just like you, Goosey. <laughs> Isn't that right, Peter? As I was saying upstairs, there's no question whose house this is. Yeah, well, well, should we go? Uh, you kids will find dinner in the icebox. We won't be late. I'm in Europe, I'm single, it's summertime, and I'm playing cribbage. I know how to live. Would you rather be back home, loitering in a shopping mall? Hey, not every American kid hangs out in a shopping mall, you know. Some places don't have malls. Where's my goofy brother? Uncle Gustav! Uncle Gustav! Max, we were getting worried. Where's Uncle Gustav? He's at dinner somewhere with the Dysons. I think you were supposed to be around here to meet them. I think I did something stupid. Max, what's wrong? But it may be okay. Max, what did you do? Oh, no. Max! I, I was reading a book about the talismans, right? You know, the things that protect you from vampires? And I read they had to be blessed, right? But I didn't read the whole thing, which said that you gotta bring a pastor to the talisman and not the other way around, or else it's game over and the bad guys win, see? So I... So the house is unprotected? Max, you idiot! Chris, don't panic. It's probably all right. I mean, how would Lucard find it? It's gone. And the children are alone now. All three. Well, I'm sure he'll show up. He's not one to stay out after dark. You know, this will be my first visit to the House of Helsing. <laughs> oh, it is, is it? Well, the decor fits the man. Anyway, I must fly. You've done very well. I will remember. Sunset, guys. Go to yellow alert. I know. Let's get out of here. How would Dracula find us if we're not in the house when he gets here? Relax, Max. He can't know the cross is missing. Besides, all of Uncle Gustav's vampire fighting stuff is right here. They're empty. Everything's gone. It's what? S someone must have stolen all the crosses in the holy water. But who? Peter. Max, get upstairs. No way, Max, Max, upstairs! Peter, 
took all the crosses in the holy water. Peter? Gustav, what on earth is going on? Ah. Well, that's gratitude for you. reached me that the Dysons were in town, those old trusted friends of Mr. Helsing's, an opportunity presented itself. She's not a vampire yet. Until you kill her, you only control her mind, not her soul. Don't quibble. Here, I want to cross blast. Take him upstairs, quickly. This holy water will free you from that monster by my hand. But I am the cause of such things. Perhaps you were better off with Peter after all. At least I can bring you back again. My dear friend. I wish you would stay. I know this sounds silly, but for some reason, when Anna and I woke up this morning, we couldn't wait to go home. Oh. You didn't sleep well? Oh, no, I slept very soundly. But I had the strangest dreams. But I don't remember them now. The headache I woke up with. Oh, my. The whole evening's a blur. But I promise when we visit again, we'll stay longer. And then I'll try not to be such a jealous fool when Anna praises you. Then you wouldn't be yourself, dear Peter. When Max wakes up, give our love to him. Uh, We'd we like to meet him someday. Bye. <laughs> That's one European custom we'll never get used to. <laughs> Now remember, we must not tell Max that the cross of the Magyars was crafted by St. Varma and never had to be blessed in the first place. Agreed? There goes my day. Yeah, but we should tell him that in the future he must finish reading whatever he starts. A little knowledge is a dangerous thing. But for now, let him sleep.
Coming up next, it's... Are you... And because they're cutting down the rainforest means that we're losing a lot of animals by taking away their homes. We need to stop using cars and ride more bikes. Pollution is just really stuffing up the water and nobody can really go swimming. The past, plastic, glass, and everything that you can recycle. You're your own person. You know Wham Watch. Weekdays from 3 to 7. That's right, a Hogarth, a scene from the Beggar's Opera. No darling in oil. Just remember who found it for you. Ciao, baby. Hi. Um, uh, you had an ad in the paper uh, saying you needed a courier for the shop. Uh, well, I'm eager, and I'll work hard. And my hours are flexible. And I own my own beautiful. My own bicycle. And don't tell me. You're an aspiring art student who just loved to make some contacts, huh? No, I, I don't know anything about art. Really? But I, I know what I like. Um, have you seen that painting where these dogs are playing poker? It's, it's really neat. I must have missed it. <sighs> Look, it's a simple job. You're a bike courier. I'm tired of dealing with these messenger companies. Things always get lost, huh? I need someone I can rely on. That's me. There's no chance for advancement. Oh, perfect. My mom says I have no ambition. <laughs> I, I can get her to write your letter. No, that won't be necessary. Ta Chris Townsend. Well, fine then. Chris, you've got the job. Be here at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Yes, ma'am. Please, Julia. Yes, Julia. Card's number two file, please. Thank you. I gotta tell you, as far as vampire hunting goes, this is a little on the dull side. To defeat Lucard, we must first understand his financial empire. He has holdings all over the world, most of them secret. That is the real basis of his power. But we can make it more interesting for you to work, Maximilian. What are the three possible outcomes of vampire attack? That's easy. Number one, a vampire can bite you and feed on you, leaving you dead as a doornail. Number two, he can put you under his control so you're a mindless zombie. And number three, he can turn you into a vampire. Very good. Hey, look, guys, not that this isn't fascinating, but I gotta get to Miss Heisenberg's. Chris says she's Bay of City. Oh, yeah, she's that American who took over the Reinhardt Chateau. She's sort of attractive. 
for an older woman. Remember, Christopher, keep your guard up. He's out there. Hey, Lucard knows we're on to him. We'll probably never see old Captain Overbite again. The brushwork, the uh, balance of the color, with a wonderful sense of movement. Only Tomasi could bring it all off. He's always been my favorite painter from the Venetian school. So, have you um, given it some thought since yesterday? It is fine. I must admit you have me at something of a disadvantage, Miss Heisenberg. I've long dreamed of acquiring this great work. My aesthetic desires may overrule my financial wisdom. Ah, but certainly not your resources. True. To own Tomasi's Venice Landfall. What an honor that will be. Of course, it will take a day or two to arrange the details. Of course. A pleasure, Miss Heisenberg. Well, you're not much like my other business new clients. The pleasure is mine to deal with someone who can not only afford a masterpiece, but who can also recognize one. I like to think I can recognize beauty wherever I find it. Until tomorrow. Until tomorrow. Listen, what are you doing? Sorry, Miss Heisenberg. Julia, are you okay? Sorry, Julia. Do you know who that man is? Yes, that's Alexander Lucard. Yeah, he may seem normal to you and everything, but he's not your everyday multimillionaire. I should say not. Most millionaires can't tell Picasso from pork futures. But Monsieur Lucard, he has a real eye. Yeah, not to mention teeth. What? Look, I'm gonna tell you something, and you have to believe me. Alexander Lucard is... is not a nice guy. <laughs> Christopher, I do believe you're jealous. No, I, I would be, but... Please, I'm flattered. But really, I'm a big girl now, and I can take care of myself, okay? Now, why don't you do me a favor? Go clean up the mess you made in the hall. Thanks. I'm telling you, he was there in broad daylight. Find some old painting, Venice landslide, he said he'd be back. You mean the Venice land fall? Yeah. This is what we've been waiting for. Now we can tell the cops that Chris's boss may be in some danger. They can stake the place out. Hey, that's pretty funny. Stake the place out. Get it? <laughs> yeah. Maximilian, I've told you before, the authorities are no help. They simply won't believe you. Besides, we have no proof. I mean, if we're going to go to the cops, we got to get some evidence against the current. More schnitzel, anyone? Yes, please. What painting did you say Lucard was buying? Okay, so I got the name wrong. No, I don't think you did. It was the Venice Landfall, right? Yeah, why? Well, that was one of the paintings stolen in the Rijksmuseum theft in 86. This can't be right. There must be a different Venice Landfall. No, there's only one. But that's impossible. That would mean Julie selling stolen goods. Well, there's only one way to find out if we can figure out a way to get inside the chateau. What's the figure? She happens to trust me enough to give me a key. Oh, no, no. You're not going to use my key to sneak into the chateau. Oh, yeah? And that's final. I bet this is incredibly illegal. Stop being such 
such a worrier. Okay. Okay, no more in a minute, and that's final. Come on. Where's the painting? It's right here. But it must be in the back. We're not allowed in the back. That's it. That's a stolen painting. Tony must have sold it to her and she didn't know. Oh, yeah? Look at this. A Matisse. A Renoir. Chris, all these paintings are stolen. Yo, come on, we gotta get out Don't here. make a move. You're under arrest. And that's exactly how it happened. You have to believe us. I see. So you were doing a little sleuthing on your own, is that it? Well, I'll tell you what, Mr. Townsend, Miss Metternich, I actually believe you. You see, we've been staking out this exhibition for some time now. We're on the verge of breaking a major art theft ring, and we don't want months of work destroyed by a couple of amateurs. So just go about your business without discussing it with anyone. Understood? It wasn't stupid. Oh, sure. Einstein would have been proud. I mean, if you figured it out, the cops must have too. Says who? The cops around here don't seem too swift. They don't even get close to a card. Maybe no one's ever given them a reason to. But I tell you, if we did get enough evidence on the card, this Captain Wolf is the right guy to bring it to. He didn't mess around, boy. Really? Worth remembering. I know it's short notice, but I can offer you a fine meal. And you can watch me unveil the picture in its new showplace. In your castle? How could I refuse? Eight o'clock, then. My car will pick you up. Delightful. Well, Christopher, you are in an industry with some very interesting perks. Are we getting t-shirts? Better than that. Miss Julia Heisenberg is invited to dinner at the private castle of one of her clients. She is? To unveil the painting which I sold to Monsieur Alexander Lucard. Why, Christopher, you look as though you've seen a ghost. Not strictly speaking. You see, Miss Heisenberg. You... No one will ever replace you in my affections, dear Christopher. Not even our dashing Monsieur Lucard. Now, close up for me, will you? Yeah, but. See you tomorrow? Hours, picked up suspect as he left the art gallery. Went to office. Emerged again just after noon. Went to nearby restaurant. Cross street to avoid a church. We think that's significant. Oh, indeed. This is quite a story you're weaving. It's just the facts, sir. 1215, tailed subject to restaurant. Refused garlic dressing on his salad. There's a pattern emerging here, isn't there? Yes, Max, there is. Thank you. The gentleman obviously prefers Thousand Islands dressing. Poor taste, perhaps, but unfortunately not a crime in this jurisdiction. Then there's this. Ah, oh, yes, I see. A very handsome picture. Well, you can't see Alexander Lucard. Perhaps he went to make a phone call. No, I mean he was right there. You can't see him because he's a vampire. No, Max, you can't see him because he's not there. Exactly, which proves my case. Max, really? It's proof! Max, I think you're a very fine little boy with a very active imagination. But as you can see, there are a number of pressing matters on my desk. It was nice to meet you. But there's more. We went to this guy's castle, and he tried to bite me and... Take me. a hint, kid.
Maybe it's all on how you frame. Christopher, what is it? Look, I, I know I never studied art, right? But when a really great artist painted a masterpiece, how many copies did he make? What? She probably thinks she's hit on the perfect scheme, selling forgeries of stolen paintings. If she's actually trying to sell Lucada fake, she'll be dead by morning. But does he know that much about art? He's had about 900 years to bone up on it. He's put a curse on all the doors since we were last here. Sophie, Maximilian, you must stay out here with the holy water to prevent the door from sealing us in. Do not move from this spot. Yeah, do not move from this spot. <laughs> What's so funny? It's just the way you talk. You sound as though you used to have drinks with Michelangelo. <laughs> Never. He was too splashy. Let me offer you a dessert wine. It will only take a moment. I gave the servants the night off so that we might enjoy a little privacy. too far this time. Just give me one minute. I'll leave you, I promise. Yeah. Christopher, you have passed all limits. Let me go and leave at once. Dracula! Really, Helsing, this is a private party. going to possess her. But as they say in the movies, it's not what you're thinking. However, if you're going to be this way about it... I hate to do this, but that is the real card. That's impossible. Is Julia Heisenberg? Yes. Ari Wolf, captain of police. What? You're under arrest on charges of theft and fraud. You're arresting her? Well, what about Lucard? Monsieur Lucard has been good enough to cooperate with our investigation. Always happy to help the local authorities. You need only call on me, captain. He cooperated with you? Well, that's nuts. He's... That's enough, Christopher. By the way, these kids out front, Monsieur Lucard, they were throwing water on your doorway? Kids, let them go. I suggest all of you people get going. You're just lucky Monsieur Lucard is such a good citizen. Come, let's go home. Believe me, this could have ended up a lot worse. Worse? I can't imagine how. Captain Wolf, 
Everything went well. Perfectly. Have you had time for a bite? <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. And the results? A woman of rare talents, Captain. Cunning, beautiful, cool under fire, and of course, immoral. I knew the painting was a fake from the start. Not much of a trick, considering I was there when it was painted. I think you'll be useful to us in the art world. Most useful, I believe. Coming up next, it's... We'll revive hit movies, give you more what you want. And best of all, no commercials. Keep it locked right here. The possibilities are endless. Wham Watch, weekdays from 3 to 7. The name Wham didn't just fall out of the sky, it came from 12's youth network. yogurt instead of ice cream. It's much better for you. Besides, they don't put real boysenberry bits in ice cream. Yeah, they better not try either. Let's get all the stuff inside, children. I have work to do that can't wait. Vampire work? Yes, a little experiment to test the theory I've been working on. Mom! Eileen! Hi, guys. <laughs> Mom! You're supposed to be in Australia, young woman. Oh. Well, I was. Now I'm here. But not for long, and neither are Chris and Max. We're going home for good. What? I just got promoted to senior vice president. So I'll be working at a Philadelphia head office from now on. No more traveling all over the world. Isn't that great? Oh, uh, there's my replacement. I'm sorry, I've got to go brief him. But I'll tell you guys more about it tonight at dinner, okay? Start packing, guys. Bye. That's great. Yeah, great. It's just terrific. Are we all set, Miss Town? Call me Eileen. Eileen. That's one of the scarves the Contessa Suarez gave you? Absolutely. Good. What we have here, ladies and gentlemen, is an article of clothing that once belonged to a vampire. 
Are you ready? Yep. to prove well ask yourself what just happened well the cross of the magyars destroyed the scarf because it once belonged to a vampire correct but the question is how was the scarf destroyed now, take a good look at it now doesn't it look hundreds of years old sure it does it was hundreds of years old yes yeah, so how come the cloth didn't look that old before the cross sat because it belonged to a vampire it didn't age it was frozen in time or trapped outside of time, and that's the key. Think about it. We know vampires don't reflect in mirrors because they exist neither in the land of the living nor the dead. Vampires are between worlds. Now, what if that between world were somewhere outside time somehow? So the cross brought back the scarf into our world, the normal time, and then aged hundreds of years in a few seconds. Yes, yes. You recall the time the cross dispatched Arthur Bauer. Arthur died and became a vampire, so in effect, he also was outside of time. Then the cross returned him back into time, where, of course, he was already dead. But if there's a between world, wouldn't a vampire be out of our reach? Not totally out of our reach. We just brought this scarf out of there, and if there's a way out... There's got to be a way in. And I aim to find that way in. Great. We're this close to blowing Dracula back where he belongs. But no, we have to go back home. <laughs> <laughs> so the whole thing is going off much better than I could have ever hoped for. The new man's a little green, but I think I can work with him. And he's very bright. The good news is, then, that we should be out of here in about two or three days, tops. I've already booked our flights home through London. I want you guys to see a little history. Mm -hmm. We've been seeing a lot of history right here. Yeah, tell us more about your replacement, Eileen. Oh, well, he's awfully cute. Early 30s, fair-haired. He's very eager, and he has a wonderful laugh. <laughs> His name is Klaus. <coughs> Pass the uh, sauerkraut, will you, Max? <clears throat> well, I'm sorry, guys, but I've got a lot of work to do before I go to sleep. Night. Night. Night, Night Mom. Night, Sophie. Night, Miss Townsend. Good night, Eileen. Uncle Gustav, we can't let anything happen to Mom. Let's we'll just make sure she doesn't go anywhere near that castle. Well, that reminds me. A little while back, I took some pictures in Lucard's castle. The shots in the Great Hall were blurry and, and overexposed. I thought there was something wrong with the film. Well, now I'm thinking, maybe there was something in the room affecting the film. You mean like x-rays? Exactly. Suppose there was some kind of radiation or strange phenomena taking place. Let me see. Well, then you could pinpoint that break in time you were talking about, right? Very good, Christopher. Max, can't sleep? What's the matter? Why are you sad to be leaving here? Mom, I like it here. It's fun. Do we have to go right away? Uncle Gustav will come and visit us, Max, I promise. And think of it. You see all your old friends? and we'll be together again. You know, a week after we leave, you'll feel like you never even left. Now you get some sleep. Sweet dreams. I love you. Now, don't be nervous, Klaus. My clients trust me, and I've told them that I personally handpicked you for the job. I'm sure they'll be very impressed once they get to know you. I can guarantee it. <laughs> Eileen, what would you say to dinner tonight at the home of one of the world's wealthiest men? Oh, who's that? Alexander Lucard. He's an old family acquaintance. Is he? I've actually done business with him myself. 
It's funny, I don't recall the details. Is this a purely social occasion? When dealing with a man of Lucard's wealth and power, every occasion is a business opportunity. <laughs> oh, I forgot. I was supposed to take the kids out tonight. They'll understand. You know, you're a lot like me, Klaus. You have all the right instincts. How so? It's hard to define. You just go for the jugular. It comes naturally to me. Gaze upon this wonder, Helsing. It is the last thing you will ever see. Hey, guys. Look what I found upstairs. Well, that's quite an achievement, Max. It's got directions on it to the castle, and it's in Mom's handwriting. Look, it says she's going to the castle to meet Klaus at 8 o'clock. So that's why she couldn't make it tonight. I gotta stop her somehow. That guy is seriously wacko. So, I guess my little secret is out. This place could be the very mouth of hell itself. It very well could be. Its precise nature is unknown, even to me. It seems to be a... a hole in the fabric of time. Any scientific explanation would only scratch the surface of so great a mystery as my... refuge. Refuge? Yes. I retreat into it whenever I need to. Whenever I feel like getting away from it all. Okay, it's ringing, Max. Hit it, hit it. Hi, Mom. It's Chris. Max is real sick. Oh, he's sick. What's wrong with him? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with him? Okay. Thrombophlebitis. Mom, it's bad. He's got trombone flea bites. What? All right. All right, I'm coming home. Okay, Mom. See ya. We did it. We did it. But what are you going to tell your mom? It doesn't matter as long as she's at home under the protection of the Cross of the Maggers. Well, Helsing, it has been quite a night for you. You have seen and learned things your illustrious vampire-hunting forebearers never dreamt of. You can die happily. No. Don't get too cocky, Lucard. I'm not the one who's going to do the dying tonight. The Cross of the Magus will see to that. Fascinating, isn't it? What are you 
doing here? I thought you and Lucard were sworn enemies. Oh, we are. It's such fun. I was actually going to set a trap for him tonight. A trap baited with my charming date, Eileen. She stood me up. Can you believe that? Oh, well. You botched the whole thing up for me anyway. Doddering old clown. You'll never get the chance to use these hideous things on me, Father. The door's locked, window's sealed. What are we gonna tell your mother? I don't know. We'll tell her Max is in quarantine or something. This isn't gonna work. I told you this wasn't gonna work. I am more clever than Dracula. But he has this refuge. He draws strength from it. He's learned how to use it. And once inside, he can emerge anywhere. It's an unfair advantage, this thing. Even when he trusted me, I was never permitted within. Well, what was then? Lucard? I don't care, as long as he's gone. He's probably on the way back to the castle. That's where Uncle Gustav is, with the cross of Magyars. Oh, man! Uncle Gustav thought we were gonna be out tonight, so it'd be safe to take the cross out of the house. Well, we gotta go help him. Yeah, but, but, but your mother. Well, you can stay here and give her some kind of excuse. Me? She's your mother. I know. There's much less chance to kill you. Who is Dracula? That only he can know the secret of this place. Perhaps I should enter. Don't you be killed! Killed?! When will you accept it, old man?! I am already dead! Your son is dead! Get it?! But this is an opportunity, a breakthrough to understand what you are and how to bring you back. I don't want to be brought back! I am a vampire. And I will be the greatest of them all. But you could be lost forever. I will vanquish Dracula in his own fortress. But first... I will put an end to your silly dreams of my redemption. Once and for all. Gustav? What's that? Uncle Gustav? What's wrong, Uncle Gustav? It's Klaus. He's gone forever. Into that hell hole. But that's good. Isn't it? Let's go home. I have something to tell you. The cross.
close. The cross does have power over time. It brought him back to me. He's human again. Dad? Christopher, I was worried. Max, how are you feeling? Uh, much better, thanks. Good. Well, I have a surprise for you. Gustav called. Uncle Gustav? Mm-hmm. He said that something's come up, so he has to go abroad for a while. It sounded very important. So... So Sophie's gonna be staying with us when we get back home. I'm not gonna be traveling anymore, isn't that great? Uncle Gustav called you? Yes. Oh, and what a terrible connection. There was so much static on that line, you'd think he was calling us from outer space. <laughs> well, now that you guys are home safe and sound, I am going to bed. Oh, Max, Gustav said to tell you that he left you something in the bottom left-hand cupboard. Don't stay up too late. Night, Mom. Night. What's going on? I spoke to Uncle Gustav on the phone, and he said that he didn't have time to talk, that you'd explain. I'm not sure that we can. You tell us what you heard, we'll tell you what we saw. Whoa. What is it? It's his notes, his research, everything. You understand any of this, Max? No, not yet. But I will. I will. continues our tennis tips with a look at the return of serve. And we head out for some mountain bike action. We'll see you next... Are you in the mood for a great movie this weekend? Turn to Wham!
aromatic little herb which has outlived its usefulness, young man. monsters and they're all hungry. See, this is level five and the monsters are twice as powerful. Oh, yes, the kid is hot tonight, level six. Here I come, one step away from asking the damsel's hand in hand. What if the damsel asks the hero for a change? It doesn't work that way. I heard that American girls are really aggressive. I wish. They just come out and ask guys out on dates, don't they? Well, nobody ever asked me. I guess it depends. What if I tried it? Tried what? Entering the dungeon to bypass level two? No, it's too risky. I guess that's for fear of rejection. No, I mean, if you bypass level two, you get eaten by the giant snake. I mean the fear that someone will say no. That's what keeps someone from asking another person out on a date. Well, I'm gonna go for it. You won't be sorry. Yeah. It's only a game. Uncle Gustav! Uncle Gustav! Max, I sent you for this milk hours ago. It must be a biology project by now. Oh, I'm sorry, but I met Dr. Smythe here and I just had to introduce him. Dr. Magnus Sinjin Smythe, M.A., D.D., Ph.D. Gustav Helsing, M.V.P.U. M.V.P.U. Max's very patient uncle. Ah. Dr. Smythe knows everything there is to know about vampires. He's a real expert. He saw me with my garlic and knew I was a believer. By the way, we don't need the garlic anymore. Don't need... A little Max tells me you made something of a hobby of studying the undead yourself. Oh, I've, uh, dabbled. And you're very knowledgeable in your own right, I'm sure. But I think I can safely say, without a fear of contradiction, that I am the leading authority in the emerging science of vampirology in the world today. Oh! Oh, dear. I'm so sorry. Oh. No problem. It was old. 300 years old. Oh, they are, you see. Things were much more brittle back then. Come on, Dr. Smythe, sit down. Dr. Smythe says he'll tell us everything he knows about vampires. Stuff even you never heard of. Aren't we the lucky ones? Well, I mean, garlic, crosses, wolfsbane. <laughs> These quaint old techniques are all well and good in their way, but frankly, they're outdated. You see, science is coming to the forefront now. It is? Oh, most certainly, yes. You see, I've studied the extraordinary orthodontic phenomena of vampires, for instance, or how they are affected by exposure to photon waves in the solar and ultraviolet lengths. He means daylight. <clears throat> Quite. But best of all are the advances offered by technology. Behold. I've been meaning to get a new bag. Here we are. This is my sonar frequency long range detector. No, no, you'll never guess what it does. It detects sonar, sonar frequency, frequency at, at long, long range. range. Whoa. <clears throat> yes, I can. Uh, Hear a bat shriek at three miles. High frequencies are amplified astronomically. Now, um... 
Good grief. Oh, dear. I'm so sorry. Pardon? I said I'm sorry. It is indeed. I must ash. Thank you so much for your hospitality. Um, you must come and visit me in my uh, lab tomorrow. I'm sure you'll find it most illuminating. We'll be there. Well, perhaps Max will be there. I'm afraid I'll be busy gluing a vase back together. Oh, yes. Quite. Quite. See him out, Max. Dr. Benedict, you've done very good work for me. Excellent work. Thank you, Mr. Lucar. Though I don't know what usefulness I might have... Please. You've made breakthroughs in high-powered sunscreens that have meant a whole new way of life for those who are sensitive to sunlight. Your work on synthetic reflective surfaces, excellent. In fact, you've proved so valuable to me, I've decided to promote you. I'm honored. Of course, it will mean a few changes in your life. So, when a guy asks a girl out, uh, what do they do around here? Well, the museum is amazing. I've also been meaning to try the Café Fauve. Yeah, I know it. Um, check tablecloths and no roof? Yeah. We could eat al fresco. Yeah, sure. You order anything you want. I would. I mean, if someone were to ask me there. Well, actually, I had been meaning to check it out myself. Uh, well, maybe we could both go. The same time? Yeah. Uh, I mean, as, as long as no one took it the wrong way, right? Sure. I mean, it would be like uh, two people who know each other going to the same place at the same time. Exactly. And for heaven's sake, don't tell Max or Uncle Gustav. We'll never live it down. Not in a million years. So, little Max, did you enjoy your tour? It was fantastic. I can't believe that all the people working here believed. <laughs> Would that it did, Max. Only I am involved in the extremely sensitive vampire area. My work here is uh, very hush-hush. What exactly do you do? Well, um, I'm not supposed to discuss it, really. But uh, just this once. Come along. Here it is. My brainchild. The anti-vampire gun. Whoa! What's it do? Well, it's a sort of laser. It fires amplified sunlight. A ray so powerful, no vampire could stand up against it. Allow me to demonstrate. The target is made of wood from an actual vampire's coffin. Stand back. Stand back! Going to fire! Flambe. Yes, with this device, I could rid the world of vampires once and for all. Ooh, mustache. I've got an appointment with the uh, money people about a further grant to put the gun into production. Right, come along. Dr. Smythe, I've been looking forward to hearing about your project. I was hoping to get a look at your project soon, Dr. Smythe. <laughs> and I was hoping to show it. I have a few tests left to perform, a couple of weeks at the most, perhaps a month, and... Uh... How about this evening? Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> smashing. I also wanted to speak to you about the security issue, you're sure that no one knows what you're doing. No, no. I've told absolutely no one. Uh, well, except for a little boy. A boy? From around here? Yes. Delightful young fellow. Keen as mustard on vampires. Oh. 
Is he? The young are always much more ready to believe, aren't they? That's been my experience, yes, before the parents stifle it. Well, he lives with a dotty old uncle. Plenty of stifling going on there, I can tell you. Well then, Dr. Smythe, why don't you bring the little fellow along tonight when you show me the gun? Really? Would you allow that? Why not? Providing you don't mention my name to him, of course. I'd like to remain anonymous. Oh, yes. Quite. Quite. Shall we say nine o'clock at the lab? With your little friend? Oh, I say that's absolutely spiffing. I'll uh, see you then. Yes, I'll see both of you then. It sounded a lot better than it looks. It's red and pig feet and jelly. Why didn't you tell me? You didn't ask. You just ordered it. Actually, it's okay if you can get used to it. Yeah, well, maybe this wasn't such a good idea. What? Pig's feet are the day. This isn't a date. Wouldn't it be funny if Max walked by right now? We'd never hear the end of Max! Dive. God, your pig's feet are getting cold. Maximilian, just in time to uh, 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 make me drop something. I sent this off the laser. Who oh, did I miss, Max? Yes, it's all, um, it's all. Uh, uh, God's teeth! He's burnt out. What is? Uh, my laser transponder. Luckily, I have a spare. Uh, the key is to always be prepared, Max. So in times of crisis, I can always say, uh, uh, "Quietly, it's gone." Oh. I know I'm doing extra. What could I have done with it? I know. Maybe it's in our house. Don't be foolish. It is a vast scientific component. Kind of like the ones that fell out of your briefcase at my house. Buy a ticket. You're a clever boy. Oh, a brilliant boy. Now, Max, listen to me. I want to run home, flank speed, and find my transponder. It's like this one. Oh, any better. Uh, not burnt out. Now, run! <laughs> this really cool part is when a guy rolls a grenade into the room and Mel Gibson yells, Get the back! How'd you know? Now! From the very lip of a breakthrough, for want of a nail. Well, the shoe was lost. Ah, Mr. Lucard. Nine o'clock. Already. Not planning to lose any shoes tonight, are you, Dr. Smythe? <laughs> no, indeed. Uh, nothing was lost. Just uh, misplaced. Uh, but it's on the way. Good. I hate people who waste my time, Dr. Smythe. Good heavens. So do I. <laughs> well, uh... Let's begin with a quick overview of the technology, shall we? And I also hate people who try to stall. Oh. Oh. Dr. Smythe. Time and motion, Dr. Smythe, those are my concerns. Ah, well, uh, you're not alone there. Einstein was downright obsessed by them. Because they create money, but now it would seem that Tempus Fugit. Ah, there you go, foreign languages. I never had time to acquire them. Ah, 
I invested in you on the off chance that something interesting may come of your ideas. Obviously, that is not the case. I hate to be wrong, huh? Dr. Smart. Yes, well, uh, this doesn't seem to be the best time to talk the matter through. So perhaps I'll uh, just see you not. <laughs> You being a member of the fraternity, a lodge brother, so to speak, I thought perhaps you'd step aside. Good Lord! Good Lord! Good evening, Maximilian. Take him. Interior quality, no doubt. The design was impeccable. Your car! Max, fire the gun at me! Uncle Gustav? Fire the gun at me! Get your scientific friend down from there, will you? Monsieur Lacard, I was forced to wear this while in your employ. I hereby tender my resignation. We've heard from Dr. Smaid. He's back in England, somewhat chagrined, but not too chagrined to finish his experiments, I'm sure. I hope he does. I mean, if there really was an anti-vampire, then it'd be great. It would, Max. That's one of the reasons I infiltrated Lucard's laboratory. I'd been watching Dr. Smythe for weeks. If he really was going to build a weapon that worked, I wanted to know about it. But it didn't? Oh, there are some secrets which nature never intended us to learn. Yeah, kind of like Chris and Sophie go on a date. You saw us? I'm mortified. <laughs> Look pretty cool under that table, Chris. <laughs> well, Benedict. No after effects, I trust. Smythe turned out to be a bungler after all. I thought as much, but one can never be too careful. What do you know about that? It seems I'm the proud owner of the world's only delayed action vampire gun.
coming up next, it's... Are you in the mood for a great movie? Roy of Morgan City, Louisiana. With a little creative thinking, these two guys won the Name the Channel contest, a family vacation in Colorado, and got to go to Washington, D.C. to launch WHAM! America's Youth Network. Thanks, Tom and Brian. The name's Stan, and you made it happen. WHAM! America's Youth Network. You haven't changed much in 15 years. I'll take that as a compliment. You're still alarmingly informal. The most serious work is often helped by the most unserious methods, dear Arthur. Ah, here she is, Sophie Metternich. Meet an old student of mine, Arthur Bauer. Hi. Good day. Arthur was one of my best students when I was at Toomingham. He had a real talent for vampire history. I hope that's not dinner you're making. It's better. This is a great day, Sophie. Did I ever mention the quinidrine solution? Only a thousand times. A legendary cure for people who've become vampires. But the key ingredient doesn't exist. The leaves of the Philemon tree extinct for over a hundred years. But now, we might have it. Arthur has located two leaves. I found them purely by chance, pressed in an old book of poetry my grandmother gave me. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. I must dash but I'll return tomorrow to run an analysis of the solution. Fine. Sophie will see you out. Kidnapping is very unusual. Perhaps it was some kind of prank. Perhaps. Inspector Breton, Arthur and I have stumbled onto a massive conspiracy. Now, as incredible as it sounds, we have discovered an attempt to take over the entire world's financial institutions. If I told you who was behind it, you'd be astonished. I don't astonish easily. Well, we'll see. The man is Alexander Lucard. Really, Mr. Helsing? I investigate crimes, not fairy tales. No, wait. Listen. Arthur and I have designed a computer virus. If it entered Lucard's computer systems, it would wreck his entire financial empire. Now, I think whoever kidnapped Arthur knew of our plans and is trying to stop us. You've been very helpful, Mr. Helsing. Mademoiselle. What are you up to, Uncle Gustav? What computer virus? Oh, it's just something for them to worry about. Here, you carry my bag. I'm running home. You're what? A vampire hunter has to stay in top shape. Oh, oh, sure. Uncle Gustav's running last morning, noon, and night. Besides, why should I carry your bag? Hey, no pain, no gain.
Too late. It's been set in motion. I... You... Hello. Hey, Rocky, how about taking a break? Right. It's time for my high-protein energy drink anyway. It's got 12 nutritious ingredients, including honey. Oh, great. The battle of the century. Dracula versus Winnie the Pooh. I better get back at it. Oh. While you're at it, can you push that wall over there? It kind of seems cramped in here. What's going on in there? I should let you talk to Max! Ma Max, if you really want to get in shape, you're going about it all wrong. Meet me in the living room in half an hour, okay? Wake him up. That will do. Hung be the heavens with black, yield day to night. Shakespeare, isn't it? Henry V. Or if you'll permit a little wordplay, Hank Sank. <laughs> Henry the Sixth, part one. But then you've always been wrong about everything, haven't you? A foolish old man sniffing around things that he'll never understand. Instead of lawn bowling or shuffleboard, you've decided to spend your twilight years as a vampire hunter. And an extremely boring one at that. At least I'm not a blood-sucking thug! Boring! Gentlemen, gentlemen! Conflict makes me thirsty. The question is, what do we do with this vampire killer? We drain him. Now, my dear Klaus, impatience will be your undoing. We need to stop and think. If we kill poor Uncle Gustav, then we won't hear all about his computer virus that will, what did the police report say, wreck my financial empire. That was a fairy tale. I'm inclined to agree. At the very least, I think he's a tad optimistic. But one should always err on the side of caution, which you would do well to remember... Klaus. Well, if he can't beat us, perhaps he should join us. Yes, he should. After Gustav Helsing becomes a vampire, it sounds so dramatic, doesn't it? He'll tell us all we want to know about this plan to ruin me. I could have sworn it was Henry V. Henry the Sixth, Part One. Act One, Scene One. Line One. Do this stuff? It's not stuff, Max. It's Tai Chi. It's much more sophisticated than that gymnasium routine you were doing. It gives you relaxation, coordination, and balance. <coughs> oh. How did they capture you, great vampire hunter? Oh, I helped them, so I could rescue you. I planned to be captured. 
Lucard has access to all the police files, so I let him think I had a plan to destroy his empire with a computer virus. Do you have such a plan? No, but if Lucard thinks I do, he won't kill me. He's already bitten me. And me. Oh, then there's nothing to prevent us from dying and turning into vampires. Yes, there is. I brought the quinidrine solution to save us both. Well? It's surprisingly tasty. How do I look? Terrible. That means the solution isn't working. It should make me look like my normal self. I don't normally look terrible, do I? How should I know? I haven't seen you in 15 years. Certainly you've aged a bit. But I look better when you saw me at the house, right? But you had better lighting. Do you know that... This smells like one of those protein energy drinks. Where's Uncle Gustav? He went to Uncle Willem's birthday party. <laughs> It'll be schnitzel till dawn. I promised him I'd look over some of Lucard's computer stuff, but now I can't find his discs. I got Uncle Willem's number. Hi, Uncle Willem. It's Chris. Happy birthday. I, I thought it was your birthday tonight. No, I I'm sure you know when your birthday is. Yeah, well, can I speak to uh, Uncle Gustav, please? He's not there. No, I I'm sure you would know if he was there. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll give your love to the family. Okay, bye. Uncle Gustav hasn't been there in weeks. So where could he be? Maybe it has something to do with that computer virus thing you were talking about. Or maybe he went to find Arthur because they were working on some formula to transform vampires back into humans. Well, either way, they're probably at... The castle. Uncle Gustav's skeleton keys. I'm gonna go look for Uncle Gustav. You guys go look for dungeons. That's probably where Lucard's keeping Arthur. <sighs> Max, not every castle has dungeons. Well, then look for something dungeon-like. Maximilian. Visiting hours aren't for another two hours. When your uncle has become a full-blooded vampire. Uncle Gustav? Klaus, I'm on the last page. Would you mind killing this little squirt for me? You don't scare me, Lucard. I'll hang him outside. Let the birds peck out his eyes. And the lizards chew on his toes. This guy scares me. Listen, did one of you drink from those plastic bottles in the fridge? You mean my high protein and energy drinks? Oh no, Max, that was my vampire formula you drank. I drank the whole thing. So that's why Lucard and Klaus couldn't get me just now. The, the quinadrine must have more properties than we thought of, Arthur. But come on, we must get home. 
make more of the solution before we're done for. Drying solution. This isn't Mexican or something. Let me see. It's Latin. Aqua Helvetica. Which is? Swiss water. Tres partes. Three dashes of mustard seed. A, a measure of wolf's blood. Gross. Atabus inch. Bur burnt ash. Come on, hurry up. Garlic. Mandrake juice. And the key ingredient, a leaf in the filament tree. Uncle Gustav, where is it? Little red book. Top shelf. Got it. You have to drink this. God. It works. Arthur, drink up. a vampire. He's delirious. Not at all, Herr Professor. You've ruined my life once before. You won't wreck it again. Arthur, what do you mean? You were one of my best students. One of the best. The best one received a recommendation for a professorship, but not me. You destroyed my dream, Gustav. So I returned to rob you of yours, to make certain that you'd never defeat Dracula. Oh, Arthur. At what cost? None. Lucard has promised me immortality, an eternity, to savor the revenge of this moment. I had already died when you blundered in to save me, dear Gustav. Died so that I may be undead, as I am now. I'll take care of this. It's worn off. You can't hurt me. I'm immortal. <laughs> as soon as he reached the full vampire state, the cross of the Magyars would not allow him to exist. Poor Arthur. He traded his life for immortality. And his immortality lasted just 20 seconds. We have a report from our people. Helsing's computer virus was a phony. Apparently, he wanted to test an anti-vampire solution he'd concocted. Arthur Bauer was only too willing to tell me all about it. Poor Bauer. Blind hatred like that never survives long. Constructive hatred requires focus. And if the solution worked, 
You needn't worry about that, Klaus. The key ingredient no longer exists. I'm sure of that. I've got the only one left. It's still a very childish, dangerous game. I have no intention of losing all this because of some potion or spell. When he shall die, take him and cut him out into little stars, and he will make the face of heaven so fine that all the world will be in love with night. And pay no worship to the, the garish sun. Romeo and Juliet. Act two, scene three. Act three, scene two. Come, clouds, a million nights stretch out before us. Coming up next, it's... Are you in the mood for a great movie? Palata, you know? To do Elvis specially in Personator is... That is my, my hobbies, you know? I, it's my interest, I, interesting to do it, you know? I can take, uh, take this chance, can sing in my restaurant to entertain my customer, you know? I wish they like it, you know? Swamp do you think Rosanna Anna still around who, who thinks Elvis is still, still alive himself? I think there are people who think that, but I think they're deluding themselves. I just pretend, you know, he's still alive in, in, in the world, you know, in hiding somewhere as well. This business of seeing Elvis in a supermarket. I mean, how do you know what Elvis would have looked like 13 years off, you know? Would it be, be your teddy bear? Just wanna be a teddy bear. Street Noise, Monday, Wednesday, and weekends, only on Wham! Amelia, my dear wife, what can I say to apologize to you? I know I failed you. They said that all you had was a fever. I know you can hear me, Amelia. You're waiting for Klaus to release you so you can become a vampire like him. I won't allow it. I'll stop him. Well, Mr. Jaeger. Klaus! I thought you would have had enough of this place after poor Amelia's burial today. <laughs> she can't come to you as long as the wild rose branches are on the grave. If she were in her grave, of course. <laughs> you see! 
Amelia was very anxious to be with her own kind. You're too late, Mr. Jaeger. You're guarding an empty grave. <laughs> <laughs> my old radio. It's been gathering dust in the closet for who knows how long and it still weighs a ton. <sighs> it's got short wave. You get the whole world on this, Max. Not to mention baseball games. <laughs> yeah, but it's wrecked. Yeah? Well, well, I've, I've been meaning to repair it, but uh, now you can fix it. You have a knack for electronics, huh? <laughs> have fun. <laughs> Yes? My name is Paul Yeager. I've been told that you might be able to help me. I know I shouldn't discourage youthful energy, Max, but that thing is from the Bronze Age. It's never gonna work. See, if I let you listen to the Phillies on it, will we be able to hear the New York Metropolitan Opera? It comes on Saturdays, <laughs> I, I think. His name is Klaus. He met Amelia one night at the theater. I don't like to go to the theater. She often went by herself. From the first night she mentioned him, she began to change, to grow sick. Later, I saw the bite marks on her neck. I still didn't believe it was happening. I took her to doctors. She was getting so weak. They didn't listen. They gave her pills. Pills. It's all right, Mr. Yeager. Go on. Please. Help me. What do you want me to do? I want you to hunt this creature down and kill him. If it electrocutes you, can I have your allowance? It works! Oh, Stat, it doesn't count, Max. No, no, I hear something. It's some kind of two-way two -way communication. Maybe the guy's a spy. Or a taxi driver. He's complaining about somebody who didn't tip him. Come on, come on. You'll forgive me, Mr. Yeager, but killing a vampire is no easy task. They have a nasty habit of fighting back. I'm a retired army officer, Mr. Helsing. I know my way around weapons. I can obtain anything you need to kill Klaus. I'll pay you. I'm not a hitman, Mr. Yeager. My answer is no. I have been told that you help people. I'm sorry to be mistaken. Klaus, you're late. I was delayed. You mean you are out raiding the countryside again against my specific orders? 
missing persons everywhere. A disturbing rash of homicides. You wouldn't know anything about that, would you, Klaus? What if I did? You're always telling me about the good old days when you used to terrorize the countryside. Klaus, I know what it is to be young and enthusiastic, but we must have discipline. Things matter now. To whom? Listen to me. You are jeopardizing all I've worked for. Years of effort thrown away for a few nights of blood sucking on some stupid country road. From now on, you will limit your hunting. Is that clear? Okay. Okay. Good. Now then, what did the bank say? The money's ready. A million in cash. I'll contact the environment minister's assistant about delivery tomorrow. Personally, I think the price is too high. Then think harder. It's nothing compared to the fortune we'll save by killing that pollution bill. Call me when you've made contact. Get me Tokugawa in Osaka. Oh, come on. All games. On the board. Anything. So, Klaus, have you confirmed the details of the delivery? Yes, Alexander. Oh, man. I'll rendezvous with the minister's assistant tonight. Where? In the market district on the old bridge. Fine. And Klaus? After the rendezvous, come straight home. No detours, no excuses. Mr. Jaeger, I gave you my answer. Look at this. I've marked the areas where Klaus's victims have vanished or been left for dead. He's been attacking in a geometric pattern, a pentangle. And here, at the upper left point of the star. What about it? Klaus will strike his next victim there, to complete the pattern. It's a game with him. Where is this? I bet it's in the market district, near an old bridge. Well, he's right. How did he know? Please, Max, get back upstairs. But I just heard you-know-who talking with that Klaus guy on the radio. There's a rendezvous tonight. Get upstairs, Max. Like you, Mr. Jaeger, Max wants to find intrigue and patterns everywhere. And so, like you, he does. If you won't kill Klaus for me, I'll do it myself. I've got a surprise for that monster. You say it's no easy task to kill a vampire. Well, perhaps if your wife had been taken by one, You'd have the will to take the risk. It is not a question of will. I swear to you, Helsing. I'm going to kill this vampire. And I'll also kill anyone who gets in my way. I heard him say he's going to get a vampire. Shouldn't we help? No. All right. So I'm here as you requested. But get to the point. I have some business to attend to. I came here to warn you, Klaus. You're in danger. You've arranged some sort of meeting tonight in the market district. You must cancel it. If you go, you'll be destroyed, and I won't be able to help you. Hmm. Look, I picked up Lucar and I saw your phone, okay? I did. Yeah, right. Look, I'll prove it to you. 
Okay. This is how I had Well, here we are with the Phillies trailing two to nothing in the bottom of the third, the chance to come back. Yes. Way to go, Slugger. There must have been a security breach, possibly on this line. I thought your cellular phones were secure. Ha! What do you say now, guys? Nothing is secure, Klaus. I tell you what, until we can set up another rendezvous with the minister's assistant, we'll leave the money with the general. Who? Shh. That whatever that money's for, somebody's gonna get hurt. We should find it. Yeah, but who's the general? Klaus never showed up! I didn't think he would. Mr. Jaeger, please! A vampire would be foolish to strike in a predictable pattern, and I've never yet heard of a foolish vampire. Perhaps you're right. Perhaps Klaus knew not to take another victim tonight. Mr. Jaeger, perhaps you need a rest, some time off. My wife doesn't get any time off. Why should I? I'm warning you, Helsing. If you're protecting the vampire that took Amelia from me, I'll kill you. The general. Who is the general? Not who. Where? What? I'll explain later. Come on. Uncle Gustav! Uncle Gustav? That's strange. Let's go anyway. Come on. Now look, I'm not one to pry, but what are we doing here? Well, the general isn't a person. It's a place. This is General George Patton Park. People just call it the general. Are you saying Lucard buried his treasure here? Hey, of course! Vampires always bury their loot. Well, come on, let's find it. It's gotta be around here somewhere. mental club you did your whole max i'm thinking yeah well don't hurt yourself well you know i just realized that we're actually looking for a vampire's loot on saint george's eve so well some people believe that on saint george's eve a vampire's buried treasure gives off a blue flame oh great so lucard's goons are probably guarding the money no not tonight when it's a full moon on saint george's eve vampires have to return to where they were first buried where do you guys learn this stuff? I've been expecting you, Klaus. In fact, I've been waiting 13 years for this night. Get away, old man! 13 years is a long time to wait for a full moon on St. George's Eve. The night when vampires must return to their tombs to sleep. This holy water will imprison you here. You've been doing your homework! What do you want? I want you to live again. To live as you did before Dracula took you. Then you were alive, Klaus. Wrong. I'm alive now. Dracula took me to make me immortal. 
No. He took you because you are my son. Again, Klaus, as nature intended you to live as my son. <laughs> I should take you now and set your soul free. But I cannot do it. No. Too much of a coward. No. Too much of a father. I'm going to seal you in your tomb until I can find a way to free you. I'll tear you to rags. One day I'll find a way to break Dracula's grip on you. Then I'll have you back. Dracula will free me. And then I'll kill you myself. Dracula can't free you. Only I can. I was right. You're in league with this murderer. I'm only trying to reclaim the soul of my son. Your son? Klaus is your son? And you knew all along. You could have stopped him from turning Amelia into a... That's not true. I couldn't have prevented that. But I can stop him now if only you let me. I'll stop both of you! Finish what you started. What? What are you talking about? Well, go on! Kill him! Klaus, you were an excellent assistant, but you become far too unstable. Me? I warned you, but of course, you didn't listen. You're not gonna let him seal me in here? Who better to deal with an undisciplined child than his own father? And for that service, Helsing, I'll tell you, I played a little joke on your surrogate family. They're somewhere out in General Patton Park digging for non-existent treasure. Please, tell them it's rude to eavesdrop, won't you? I give you this truce for one night only. And now, gentlemen, if you'll excuse me, I really must fly. St. George's Eve. And time to go home for a night. Don't, Father. Hope they don't make us replace our divots. Sophie, Chris, is that you? Over here, Uncle Gustav. Well, did you find any wild geese? What do you mean? Our friend Lucard knew you were listening, so he sent you on a wild goose chase. <laughs> you mean he was on to us? Well, I'm sending him my cleaning bill. Max, are you all right? No treasures. No blue flames. Oh, that's right. It's St. George's Eve, isn't it? I completely forgot. <laughs> Never mind. Better luck next year. Come on, let's go home. <laughs>
Coming up next, it's... What's going on here? Will you get up? Will you get up? Every... Oh.